You never know who they might let in the door. We found them in here. Figured we might as well put them to work. This is In the Building. Live from San Antonio, Texas. With Mike Taylor and Rudy J. Take it away, boys. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. To have him back doing my intro, our intro, the Pat, Big Balls the legend. Pat, the legend. That guy was a big time um, radio badass back in the day in the seventies and eighties in San Francisco. I think is where he worked. I think he worked in L.A. too, and then Pat wound up in San Antonio and was the longtime voiceover guy for the Ticket. And he's the guy that created that original intro for the radio show back on the Ticket. He did all the he did the doing things. You got to get up and get it. I can't even. Pretend yeah, to sound like it. him. You can't do it. Doing things. Yeah. Thank you, Pat, for being a part of this in the building. Welcome in here. It's the fifth day of this new show. It's Friday. It's Friday. <sighs> what is it? Is it a football Friday, Freaky Friday, F U Friday? What is it? It's going to do what it do, baby. Um, Just make it do what it do. I'm down with putting themes on days, I don't know. obviously. If it, if it fits, gotta everything fit. got to be organic. Got to be organic. I got know? my Rangers hat on. I see that. So is that I'm a new wagon. thing? Okay. There ain't I'm nothing wrong wagon. with that. And if the Astros win next year, I'll be in here with the Astros hat on. And there's not a damn thing wrong with no. that. No. Now, if you went from like Yankees to Red Sox. What's wrong with uh, that? I guess, if, well, you can grow an ass man. You can do what you right. want. I think you'd catch more hell for that. We live in San Antonio in a, in a neutral city. Are we neutral? This is the Astro town. We are whatever team's winning. I think this is the Astro. Dude, you go, they've got Ranger shit everywhere still now at you know, Academy and Dick's and all these places. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. Get, you, where'd, you, where'd you get that hat? Did you order it online? Did you buy it locally? It was it was a gift. A gift. I wonder where they got it. Well, it was. you can get Ranger stuff in this town now. The station I was previously on was the home of the Rangers, so they would send a bunch of shit. Oh, okay. You got right. swag from the team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's cool. Well, look, man, it's San Antonio. It's pro sports. We, because we live in San Antonio and we support any and all things Texas, with some with some exceptions, uh, you bet your ass I can jump on and off the Rangers Astros yeah. bandwagon. Why not? In the Cowboys and Texans, for that matter, nothing wrong with that. No, Cowboy fan will never root for them. Cowboy fan hates Texans. I don't hate the Texans. I respect the Texans. But see you, but the thing is, Mike, you got to remember, you're even though you're a Cowboy fan, you're still a professional. 
So you're not tired. Ty- like, you don't lose sleep over the Cowboys losing anymore. No, it's been a long time. You see time. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, there's some people, their Monday was ruined. Their Tuesday was kind of ruined. they just now getting back to normalcy. Mm-hmm. You're not there anymore. So it's nothing for you to root for the Texans because we're not attached to it like that because of what we do. I'll also so say it's, different. it's also pro sports. I mean, okay, I, you're gonna get all you're gonna, you're gonna lose sleep and suck at the job on Monday because a guy yes. from Arkansas and a dude from Shreveport and a guy that went to Penn State didn't show up in a playoff yes. game. Okay, you remember those days? You remember what that was like? I used to be passionate like that, Hell but yeah. it was silly. I was silly about it. Me too. I have a feeling, though, if they were ever, God forbid, go back to the Super Bowl, you you'd cry. see old school you Mike. Cry. Sure. You, no question. You because, cry. But I'm, I'm from here. I'm from the Metro sex. I'm a legit cowboy fan. I'm not some dude from Wisconsin that decided because he wants to be the antagonist at all of his buddies' Packer watching parties, he's going to be a cowboy fan just because. I was born into that. You asked yeah. me yesterday at Texas Cheer Liquor, well, how are you, why, do you still be, why are you staying a fan? I told you, I, I can't help it. It's my feelings. Like being in love with a wrong woman, Rudy. Being a cowboy fan is a toxic relationship, and I can't get over it. It is what it is. But I don't lose sleep anymore. I become kind of meh. I'm apathetic yeah, yeah, yeah. to the Cowboys. Yeah, it's almost should. funny. At twenty-seven to nothing, we were laughing our asses off. I wasn't mad. I wasn't losing no sleep. We were. La- it's now to the point where it, it's just funny. Because of course they're down twenty-seven to nothing in the second quarter. Of that, course that, that threw funny, a pick right? six. I thought it was funny. fucking hilarious. I mean, there's probably video. I think there's video somewhere of me fist pumping when the Cowboys scored to make it 27 to seven, just to be an asshole. Cowboy! Yeah, there. Woo! Yeah, I'm Cowboy! sure. Why not? I'm sure there's that video out there. Why not? Yeah. It was funny. It was hilarious. Point being, it's pro sports, man. Who gives a shit? Yeah, you can't bash. You can't. You can't. You're, wherever you went to college, although I don't support where I went to school. You went to North Texas, didn't you? I did, yeah. I went there because I couldn't afford to go to TCU. Who, you and Don Harris are the only two people that went there, right? From this town. I know Don. Didn't Don gangrene? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. They, 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 call them the, they call them the UNT Mafia, the media mafia. Oh, UNT okay. puts out a lot of broadcasters and media guys and stuff. I thought you were from the Dan Rather School of Communication. I went there, too. I went to, I went to five colleges. How, what, you Frank to, Harris? Did it take you eight years to graduate? What the fuck? Ten. Ten, at least yeah. you did. I had a wife and little kids, and I was working, and I had to I go. To I had to go part for a little bit. St. Phillips in uh, where's that at? No, the community college. Oh, <laughs> yeah. The, 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 where is it? Where is it? LG on the in thirty five by uh, yeah by Fort Sam. I got my Pell Grant bounced. Had a baby, so you didn't. You left with no debt though. No, I don't have any college. See, I left. I got the I got the degree and fifteen years of fucking debt. Biden didn't loans. bail you out yet? No. Where's I all the money? Where are all the people? Because he hasn't bailed my, my wife is 06 UTSA. Really? He hasn't bailed her out. Who has he bailed out with this, all this money that he's supposed to be, you know, freeing up his school loans? I think Where is the, it? I think they're getting ready to make junior college free for everybody, are they not? The Alamo College system is. Is that is that no not shit. right? Yeah, I'm going to start talking. When did uh, turn into they already did that. Yeah, I was going to say, maybe they've already done If that. you're a recent high school graduate in the San Antonio area, your tuition is free at Alamo Community Colleges. There you go. Which is what I advise. When the fuck did we turn into Canada? And I advise any young person in this town going to college, take advantage of that. You don't need to go to a four-year major school and put yourself into a lifetime of debt. Go to junior college for free, get all your basics out of the way, and then transfer to AM or UTSA or something like that. Yeah, anyway, so uh, there's Uncle Mike's tip of the day. Junior college is the way, especially if you're going to go to the Alamo colleges because it's freaking free. Why would you pay to no. go study English when you don't really need to? All right, it is in the building. It is Taylor. Rudy's batting, battling allergies. Dude, it's awful today. My bad. My apologies. That's okay. I might it's, leave at that, 12. No, half, half this town, I just got you. Don't leave me already. Half this town is coughing, hacking, <laughs> mokles, everything like yeah, that. It's bad. I've been able to avoid it so far. I also take, I take allergy medicine every day. Every day? Yeah, all year long. So Even when I'm not sick. As a preventative, I take Claritin. I did. I, I. I. I had. I have real bad mountain cedar issues. My got it from my father. That right. damn mountain cedar that we get out of out of the hill country right. ugh, kicks my ass. And when I moved to Hawaii, I thought, Oh my god! I, oh, I can, there's none of that out there. I'm breathing and nothing's being blocked. It was great. Yeah, I was. All, I breathed. I breathed salt air for three years, and I've never breathed so good. Right. Moved back home. Uh, right back on the Claritin as a preventative. 
It's all good. And I'm good. It's working. It's working. So I can bring you some Monday if you're still battling it. I got shit tons of Claritin. I got, I get the, the knock counter. I get the knockoff from Walmart. It's called Loratadine. That is, that's the actual ingredient. You can get it for $15 cheaper than the other shit that's the same. Anyway, I'll bring Coke doesn't work. Who? Coke. Cocaine. I gave that up last month. Okay. I didn't know if it would help with allergies or did it make it worse. I would think Coke would make your nose run worse. Yeah, it makes it worse. It's called Coke. But I would think it would unclog it, though. I wouldn't know. I've never done Coke. Me neither. Really? No. I almost didn't believe you. I have not. No, me either. No. LG has out the ass. Look at him. Come on, man. He looks like a. See what I mean by him exaggerating on things? He likes to build my character up there. No. I've never done cocaine. You look <laughs> not even off a stripper's ass. Come on, man. I ain't Wolf of Wall Street over here. Come on now. That no. was an awesome movie. I just decided to randomly introduce it. My way of introducing LG every day is by throwing him under the bus. I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm starting to realize that. Yeah, LG's it's, like, it's fit. Yeah, it is. I look, love it. man. Look, I'm just, it, it's the, oh, 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 that's a fine. No, that's a that's a bill collector. I'm not, oh, you should answer it. I'm just wondering when they're going to realize I'm not paying. Hello, my name is Jack. Yeah, I'm calling. When they're going to realize I'm, not, you need some I'm not sending that money. It's not happening. <laughs> Credit repair. Yeah, we, we, we ain't prepared. I'm not prepared to pay off all our bills yet. We're not no. out of debt yet. No, hell no. We might be the 26th most popular sports talk station Yo, so in the country happened? on Spotify. We went, they ain't making up, no money. huh? I woke up and what happened? We moved up again? Yeah. How? What's happening? Like, let's, let's, let's talk about this shit. So we... we we finished the show Wednesday, and LG says, hey, just got a such and such update from Spotify. We're 48. In Holy America. shit. Yeah. What the hell? Okay, cool. What? Yeah. Next day, we mm-hmm. wake up yesterday. We're 38. Yep. And then today, I'm sitting there chilling, you know, starting to put my notes together. Yep. And Mike sends the text <laughs> on Spotify. <laughs> We're number 26 in the country. It's, it's dumb. It's, it's, what's going on? Are Thank they about to, like, ask us for money? Thank you to Fox News Dave, who just bought us five coffees. He just sent us money. Oh, my God, Thank here you. it is. Thank you to George Renteria, a member for seven months. Thank you, man. Thank you, George. Look, I, all I know is Rudy's right. We were bragging yesterday at Texas Cheer Liquor, which, by the way, thank you so much to Mr. Singh and Familia at Texas Cheer Liquor. And thank you to Thunderdome and everybody that showed up yesterday. What a turnout, right? It was awesome. You know, I went back and watched it. The the video we had, the overhead cam. The overhead was a that was a nice touch Dude. by LG. LG's a bad motherfucker. That was a nice touch. He was like, what are you able to patch into like the 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 liquor he, store's cameras? No, overhead? he just set it up top on the liqueur. Are nah, you serious? I had, I had to run my own camera up there. Yeah, yeah no he put shit. his camera up there. Yeah, and the, Dude, the white, it was so cool. freezing a little bit, but ne- hopefully next time it won't. On but, YouTube, it looked awesome. It I went back and watched about 30 minutes. It's like of one of those yesterday. cams where you're watching a game and they go to this weird camera angle mm-hmm. and you're like, that's awesome. Leave it there. Right. You know what I mean? That's what that felt like. It was amazing. Right. It's nice to see the people, you know? Yeah. Like, and then it gives you a break instead of having camera right in right your, your face, face the whole time. Right. The time right. So thank you to Texas Cheer, all the people that showed up. We were having to make room to let folks in. Right. It was crazy. I thought we might have a decent turnout, but you never know until it happens. And I'm always scared to death. No one's going to show up. Make it, I'm going to feel like shit. Y'all just showed up yesterday in mass and took such advantage of. Well, of course, that's. I mean, he had some sweet. We had some sweet swag to give away. Yeah, we had, had some a badass bunch of shit. Some badass allocated booze at retail. Uh, but I'd like to think part of the reason why y'all all showed up is to just to see in the building. No, which and no, then, it was. And so we leave. We're all happy. We're thirty eighth on. On Spotify, I wake up this morning and I'll be damned. This little show that just started five days ago is the 26th most listened to sports talk show in America on Spotify for the week. 26. For the week. I thought we'd have a. I thought. I mean, I thought there'd be a little bit of a wiener jump because we started a new show and it's you and me and pe- people that like us are excited. There's kind of a a buzz, right? And I don't want to jinx this. We may not even be in the top thousand in a year, but I I thought or there'd tomorrow. be a little bit of a jump to twenty six. We're right behind Colin, fucking Cowherd. So I decided to go big balls. I I messaged him today. What's up, Herd? We're coming. I'm just being. A, well, he has his own network. Yeah, he, he may does. want to sign us. Oh, well, maybe. I don't know. But you look at that list, the company that we're in right now. There's very few shows on there like ours. These are nationally syndicated, well-established brands. Millionaires. 
millionaire shows with shit tons of advertising, tons of promotion, a bunch of marketing. They've got they got a whole marketing team. We have more listeners this week than Dan Lebertard. What? What? On Spotify. On Spotify. Still though. Yeah. Then you I get mean, the guy that says, "Out of how many? Don't worry about it." Out of how many? How many? Sport, how many people are doing sports podcasts that in this are all, that are available? Fifty thousand. Yeah, but you know, Come there's on. always that guy. Like, well, how, what is this? Out of how many? He was trying. It was. It was low key salt, and I appreciate salt. You need salt. You need well, salt. Well, you can bring salt, but if you're a fucking moron, you're just a moron. <laughs> I mean, there's fifty. This. How many? I mean, how many people are doing sports podcasts just in this town? 30, 40 that we don't even know about. Right, dude. I'm look. I'm not. I'm humble bragging here. I'm shocked. I cannot believe. I, I thought there'd be a buzz. I had no idea it would be to this. No. And so now I feel like, gosh, I better start working out. <laughs> I better start being have. Yeah, I had a smoothie this morning. A smoothie? I had. I, I had a protein shake. You yeah. saw that. <laughs> yeah. The, Mike walks in with muscle milk. Mike Taylor, I walk in junior, with a second base. Kale smoothie. <laughs> oh my, let's not get soft. Now. Yeah. Let's keep our edge. But I'm I, like, I oh. think LG's intermittent fasting. Are you, I, are you I've intermittently never, fasting? I've never seen him eat, ever. Oh, I, don't, I don't eat breakfast. Well, he weighs up buck 50 that's for what a I'm reason. That's what I'm saying. He's in, he, he intermittent fasts without even knowing. Right. He he's just, just not he's a not breakfast a, He's guy. not a massive eater. Right. No. He likes good food, but he doesn't eat a shit ton of food. Anyway, so... I, 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 went, I went back yesterday and watched some. I need to clean up my mouth too, dude. What do you mean? I'm not. I don't. Without losing my edge, I, we came up with all the sex talk we've had the last couple of yeah, shows. Yeah, it's been bad. We sound like a couple of perverted horn yeah, dog do. Lotharios, yeah, and I don't want to come off like that. Me neither. <laughs> me I, neither. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, some of it was. A little I'm, rough. I'm a viral well, you man. You were dropping p words. Yeah, in front of. I don't know. In front man. of women. I don't mind doing that, but. I don't want, I, I just, the more attention we get, I don't want us to come off as a vulgar show that relies on, I'm not, look, I'm Colchino. I'm five foot nine, half white man. Ain't nothing I won't do. I'm nasty. But what? Yeah, but, but I need to clean up my language maybe some, just a tad, not a lot, but some. I don't want to be disrespectful. I have daughters. I have a 25 year old daughter and here I am talking like that. I don't know. I got excited. I had two shots of whiskey and. Oh, it you happened. had shots on there? I thought I only. I, thought I had it was two only shots me. before the show. Oh, I just okay. didn't tell you. I got. I gave you shit, but I didn't tell you that <laughs> I so did. This, so he's sitting there telling me you've been drinking, and all the while you were the one that was drinking. Okay, I yeah, see what's man. going on. So here. look, I'm just. I'm overwhelmed by the by the start. I look. I, we're gonna have weeks where it ebbs and flows. We're gonna. We're gonna. The the, the challenge now is because we've got a hardcore group of listeners, watchers, viewers, Thunderdomers. I don't even know what we're calling our people. And I appreciate that. Now it's how do we grow this thing? Let's grow this show while we have momentum. So tell your buddies, to tell, tell your, your buddies. wives, tell your kids, tell everybody to subscribe to this show on any one of the platforms we're on. Mo money. And uh, yeah, that's the other thing is like people just gonna assume now we just you just get rich because you're no, on the I top thirty. That. No, because <laughs> by Monday, you know, who no. knows what will be Monday. I'm going to be selling liquor at the liquor store here at 4 o'clock today. <laughs> That's where I'm going to be. Same. Same. Yeah, same. same. Right. So, but I'm just, look, I'm, I'm I'm excited. I thank you. It's been a good week, and let's end with a strong show and take a much-needed relaxation over the weekend and get back in here on Monday and kick ass all over again, man. Yeah. All right. It's so, football Friday. It you, is football tell Friday. Tell the truth. I know you're co- like my mom. Take, for example, my mom. Yeah. She don't really watch football unless her Cowboys are on. Mm-hmm. Now, I know this is kind of your job. We're kind of, I don't think we're a sports show. We're a show that talks about sports. Is okay. that fair? Sure. So, I'm whatever Spotify you, needs me to be to get yeah. to the top five. Do you give a fuck <laughs> about this weekend? Yeah, I give, I give a fuck. I'm not, See, we just I, say we need to clean it up, and here you go dropping F bombs. I did first. When it's necessary. Yeah. I'm talking about all the do sex you, talk. Yeah, all oh, the, yeah. the Cochino. Yeah, the Cochino. That was yeah, a little much. Come on now. Yeah. Watch the language, little boy. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, maybe we just need to just use the tip. We're going full. <laughs> we just do the tip. Don't go do balls tip. deep. Yeah, let's not go balls deep. Let's just okay. tip. You know, when you're 16. You Although, have you tip. ever been balls deep? Because you've got that black man penis. That's such a myth. I'm 5'9", and I wear a size 10 and a half. I feel I'm not bad. working with much. I feel bad for guys that have really long ones. I would not want that. You see? What, oh, I, I like my we... little average man size penis. I'm, no, I'm not packing. Because you watch those guys on pornography? See, that's the I'm thing. I'm going to get out of this Cochino talk. I'm making a point. Yeah. Because I just like, I've never wanted to be this giant guy. Because you never know what it's like to 
Well, the thing about it is, uh, go all the way. Well, the only thing about porn is it can be discouraging because you feel like if he ever got a hold of my lady, she'd never come home. Or she'd be in the hospital. You know, it depends. Or she probably would never come home. Or never come home. Or never come home. I always home. feel like, damn, well, sometimes you watch porn and you're like, man, my wife's never been pleased. Nah, that's, no, that's cool. No, 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 no. It's the a, it's a, it's a same reason you watch superhero movies or you watch war movies. It's entertainment. That's all it is. It's a different kind of entertainment. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not like that. I'm not packing. You're supposed to take what you see. You're supposed to take what you see in those movies. And, it, and who cares if she's thinking about that man while she's with you, right? She's, she ain't going to cheat on you. That's debatable. You know, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't first want my of wife all, thinking don't about ask her. Omari Hardwick but while I'm... But it's okay. Now, she's not okay to think about people you know. No, this is... A, but if she's a, thinking about Denzel, so what? You're with her. She's with you at the moment. You're okay with that? Yeah, sure. I want my lady to be pleased. So if she's I, thinking, I, hey, so look, she's it, thinking about Bradley Cooper, if she's thinking about Bradley Cooper, you're mm-hmm. good with that? Of course. She can even call me Bradley if she wants to. She's with me. She can call you Bradley? Do y'all role play it? I'm I'm fine with that. Yeah, absolutely. You, you you dress up as a burglar sometimes, come in the back door. No, oh, that's a little weird. I don't think she wants that, but I don't care. I don't care. She's we've never talked about this, but I don't. I'm telling baby, I don't care. I'm good. You're with me. She's not cheating on me. It, don't think about the neighbor. You know, don't think no, about no, people no, we know. Different. That's weird. That's different. There's emotions in that, but it's just raw horn dog porn. Think about, I don't care, Jason Momoa, Micah Parsons. I don't care, whatever. It's like the great Richard Pryor said, I'm going to get mine. Get yours. However you got to get yours, get it. It's interesting. (laughs) How do we go from do you give a shit about football uh this weekend to Bradley Cooper? I do give a crap about because you got on to me for saying fuck. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, and I say we're going to talk more less sex. But then I go immediately into a sexual analogy. But it wasn't over the top. No. I here's I'm ab- obviously very interested in the bo- in both of the games. However, and we're going to go watch part of the first game together. Yeah, yeah we got a meeting. We got a little work meeting Sunday. And we're gonna we're gonna watch the game together. We'll probably leave at halftime or at the end of the first game or in the fourth quarter. And if I miss part of the game driving home, you're man, not. You're I not. might put the radio on. Right. Who's got the games? Astown. <laughs> I gotta I gotta stop saying that. I'm yeah. sorry. That's disrespectful. Yeah. I see. It's, I know those you, guys. I like been, those you've guys. You've been saying that for twenty years, though. Yes, that's just fun. Yeah, that's that, just fun. It's yeah. Chris Duell's fault. I called him that. Why? What did Chris Duell do? Oh, because when he was on that station, he used to bash me all the time. Oh, okay. And Peter Bolger at the ticket would not allow me to come back on them, so I had to find subtle ways to defend myself. It was oh, fun. I didn't know that. That no, was fine. That's all good. It's Let's not do personal. It. I don't care. But anyway, I, I'm sure that they. I don't know who has me. Either the ticket or. <laughs> Or or it's this nine, ninety nine, four yeah. one. They it's had both games. One. Okay, cool. So point is, if I, if I have to get in the car and drive home, you know, I'll I'll slap them on, and I'll listen I don't to the watch game. Sport. I don't listen to sports on the radio. Well, it's a big. I don't, unless it's a big game. I yeah, listen to this. I listen game. to the. I listen to Bill Shoney if I'm in the car. Yeah, for sure. I like Shoney. Uh, unless it's a blowout. Um, but like I don't listen to random Monday night football on no, the radio if I'm no, in the car no, getting Arby's. No, no. But driving for Sunday on the way, like if we, I'm not going to sit there for seven hours. I'm going to get up at some point and go home, and I'll put the radio on because it's a championship game, but I don't have to see every play. No. I do want to watch the fourth quarter because both games will probably be pretty close. I want to see that. I want to see how it comes down. Are you not jacked for either no, one I'm, of these? No, I'm hyped for both. You are hyped. No, no, no. I'm hyped for both. Right. It's, it's winning time. If it were the Cowboys, I that's dude, totally different. We wouldn't even be meeting. We wouldn't do. I'd no be meeting. at home. Yeah, we'd be at home jacked for sure. up. And lock, y'all, y'all leave me alone. Daddy's got to watch football. It's a I think different. I think Lamar Jackson has a chance to uh, plant his flag. This is a big game. This the road to the Super Bowl goes through Patrick Mahomes, even though the game's in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. And Lamar Jackson at some point has to get over the hump, just a la Dak Prescott. I mean, this is his first mm-hmm. AFC Championship game. Yep. And you're going through King Cooper. Yeah. You know what I mean? You pretty mm-hmm. much. You're, this is what Patrick Mahomes' f- fourth opportunity. Well, sixth opportunity, but if he goes to the Super Bowl, it'll be his fourth Super Bowl already. Man, golly! And that's what I was telling you. I, th- I texted you this the other day because I test. Talking about I test only, but the rings aside, Patrick Mahomes is a better quarterback than Tom Brady, right? <clears throat> Pure skill and such. Just your eye test, just football player. Well, now we're just getting back to player. this is the old argument. Just football player. I understand. This is the old argument, good versus great versus legend. 
You okay, become so a legend, legend by winning all the great and legend. There, there is a there's a difference. So I I'm following. Go right. ahead. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's been some. I mean, John Elway is he had John Elway. He's top three. He just don't have the rings to match. But he when you but look he's at not the team, top ten is he? Well, you look at some I, of the teams he took to the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. John's up there. He just didn't have any help. Yeah, no one ever puts Elway in their top ten. But he is one of he's he's a guy as talented as there's ever been. Dan Marino is as talented as there's ever been at the position for sure. Marino was a better quarterback than Tom Brady. There is a reason why Tom Brady went in the sixth round. But I would say that like there's so many guys that have come along the way over the years that have had as much, if not way more talent than Tom, but just didn't put the work in. This goes back to the work ethic, being in the right system, having the right coaches, but work you ethic. still got to go out there and take advantage of that and master the craft. Any doubts anybody had about Tom Brady were all killed when he goes down to Tampa. You talk about taking over a shitty team. That, that was a great team. Right? That was a that was a team that missed the playoffs the year before. He goes down there and in the first year they win the title. Over yeah, the Chiefs. He's the GOAT. Mahomes may be more skilled than Tom. Right, that's all I'm saying. But he ain't the GOAT. Makes plays that Tom could never make. Sure. But dual threat in a way. Sure. Can Tom make, could and run. he can make every throw Tom can make. I think Mahomes already is top ten ever. If he quits all today. Time. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's but he's, fair. That's yeah, fair. he is. He, I mean, maybe eight or nine. But the way he's going, I don't know that he'll ever supplant Tom Brady at one, but he's he's on the way to two for sure. Thank you for the money, by the way. Those little chimes y'all hear if you're new to this show are people tipping us and stuff. Sunburst Gymnastics Academy, cheers to being 26th in the country. Just donated nineteen dollars and ninety nine cents. How about that? And LG's Thunderbone in here. Good to see him. Oh, again. what's just up, Thunderbone? What's up, Thunderbone? Thunder Where's bone? he been? Thunderbone, like bone, like bone. Yeah, LG's bone. Thunderbone. It's a sexual reference to DJ LG's member, but he he always gives us money. He always gives us uh, tips. It, it's because we flubbed it one day. I said Thunderbone instead of Thunderdome. Oh, that's right. And they roll. And somebody created somebody a social it. account called <laughs> LG's Thunderbone. I love it. I don't want it near me. I don't want it anywhere near me, <laughs> but I love it. And you then, love the bone. You just don't want it near you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't want it anywhere near me. I'll say this about Patrick Mahomes, and I love the guy. He's a fine Texas. Uh oh. I, I hear a butt coming. What? No. I will say nobody. Nobody currently playing makes love to pressure, as Stephen Jackson would say, like Patrick Mahomes. Which is why, while I think Baltimore is going to win the game, I guess we're going to do this now. It's up to you. I think the Ravens. I think the Ravens are going to win handily. Handily, thirty to twenty, twenty-eight to seventeen. And the only reason why the Chiefs will be in the game is because of Patrick Mahomes out there making love to pressure the way he does. He's going to single-handedly keep the Chiefs respectable, but. At no point in this game will it be in doubt. I think the Ravens, it may be actually a boring game. The Ravens will get the lead early and, and, and do what they do. Beat your ass to death on both lines. Stuff your ass on defense. Frustrate you. Methodically move the ball up the field with the most versatile quarterback in the league in Lamar Jackson. And they almost, it's, it's, it's not the same, but it's kind of reminds me of what the Cowboys used to do when they were good back in the 90s. What's that? Here we go. Now, and now Uncle Mike talks about the 90s Cowboys. We got to do it once a show. The Cowboys, so often, they never, they rarely blew people out on the scoreboard. But the teams they played went home thinking, God, we got our ass kicked. Even though the score might just be 24 to 20. But you felt like, you, yeah, you felt like you've been in a 12 round you fight. You got right. your ass handed to you because they dictated the flow, they dictated the, play, the pace and Fair. the play of the game, and they frustrated the bejesus out of you. And you look up at the end of the day and, God, we only got beat by seven, but it feels like we got beat by 40. I think that's what we're going to have on Sunday with Ravens and Chiefs. And because Mahomes is so good, They'll keep the score respectable, but it would not stun me if the Ravens don't run away with the game and actually beat their ass 35 to 14. The Ravens are rolling. They're going to win the title. I'll just go ahead and get it out now. That's my pick. Ravens, easy. The easy. whole shit. All the shit. Wow. Here, I got, I'm marking it off. I had it for the, I had it toward the end of the run sheet, but we got into it now, so I'm marking it off. <laughs> Yeah, I th Ravens, I, man. I think the Ravens win the game as well. I, I do. Now, I don't know if they're going to blow the Chiefs out because of exactly what you said. Because Patrick Mahomes just doesn't get blown out. He's too much of a he's too much of a competitor. 
Mm-hmm. And nobody, there's you, you can watch all the tape you want to. There's no stopping Travis Kelsey. They draw up plays in the sand at the line of scrimmage, depending on what the defense is showing them. With that said, I do feel like this Ravens defense, the way it's constructed, those receivers that, you know, were finding their way and finding their little holes against Buffalo, mm-hmm. I don't think they're going to find those against the Ravens. I mean, again, the Ravens sold me when they did San Francisco the way they did San Francisco. I was like, okay, maybe there's something here. So I do think the Ravens win this game. I don't know who – I think – or who's favored? I don't even do lines. Probably I'm Baltimore not, by yeah, four or five. And that's rare because Patrick Mahomes is never the underdog. Mm-hmm. But this is his first trip in the uh, playoffs where he's actually been on the road. He's always been at home. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah, I'm taking the Ravens to win this game too. I don't know if they're going to do with – to them what you feel like, but I, mm-hmm. who gives a shit? They, no, no, Ravens I, win the game. G- give me Ravens 28-21, right. but it wouldn't stun me. I'm just saying it, I wouldn't be surprised if the Ravens just deliver a roundhouse kick to their fucking jejun them and beat their ass by 21. Right. It wouldn't stun me at all. At all. How about that other game? You gonna you gonna <sighs> you think it's an easy call? See, I don't. Uh, I think it's a I don't think it's an easy call. I think San Francisco wins the game. Mm-hmm. I mean, look, Detroit's had a good run. But do you believe in Detroit? I do. Yeah, I believe in why because of the because of the this ascension by Detroit, the origin, the the the, the providence of this new Lions roster. Right. I mean, this roster they've been building it for a while because they have number one picks every year. High, the decision to hire Glenn Rose's own Dan Campbell has changed that group. Um, Jared Goff has gotten better in the second half of he his has. career. He is he the is, game has he finally is slowed so down good for now. He is. Yeah. This dude is so talented. Hell, he went to a Super Bowl and didn't know what the hell he was doing. And now he actually does. That talent has and he has talent. His experience, his his brain, his capacity to manage the game has caught up to the talent. His first round talent, and he's playing terrific. And the Lions don't give a shit. They're, they don't. The Lions don't know that they're not supposed to win this game. Now they've got some injury issues. What is it? They lost. They they were down to just what Sam Laporta. They lost their other. They lost two tight ends. They just brought in Zach Ertz off the street. And but I mean he's gonna have to learn four, five, six plays just so we can give Laporta a break. Yeah. But Zach Ertz is such a smart veteran. He can he can he'll be fine. He'll, he'll be figure right. out a way. Um, they lost one of their top, was it the Brock Wright, their badass linebacker, I think. He broke his forearm in the Tampa game. So they're banged up going into this. They also, their, their left guard, Jonah Jackson, is out for this game too. They got injury issues. So you've talked yourself into picking the Niners. A lot of this also, if I knew for sure that Debo was going to go, Debo Samuel That's is huge. back in practice for the 49ers, but he has a really sore shoulder. And knowing the Niners, they're they're – I don't they're think pretending they're it's him. not as bad. I don't think they're going to play him, and that's when they struggle the most. That's why they struggled against Green Bay. That's why they had the three-game losing streak earlier this year. They had mm-hmm. no Debo Samuels. He go, They go as he goes. Mm-hmm. But I just feel like the defense is going to keep them in that game. And Brock Purdy will do what he does. You know, The Niners don't – we're getting off – I don't hate to get off football on you, but the, the Niners don't stop the run well. You can run on them, and Detroit runs the shit out of the ball. Yeah, they do. And I think and that, and that takes pressure off of Goff, who's now playing better. I Brock Purdy did not look awesome until the winning drive the other night. He didn't. But that's what I'm saying. And I, I, I'm hesitant to apologize to Brock Purdy today. But I'm going to <clears throat> anyway. apologize to Brock Only because, Purdy. like, I mean, he's this is your second NFC Championship game in a row. Oh, right? have you bagged on Brock in the oh, past? Oh, I hate I can't. I, and he's done nothing wrong. I just... Feel like I, I feel like he's a product of Kyle Shanahan, Debo, McCaffrey, Bosa, Warner, Ayuk. I feel like he's a product of. He has the best left tackle in the game on his team. I'm just like, is Brock Purdy really that good, or is he Jeremy Lin? I've given him shit for Jeremy two. Lin. Yeah, Lin Sanity. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where it's just like this Jeremy guy. Lin won, he, Jeremy Lin won. Jeremy Lin won in no conference I know, finals. I know. So for now. I'll give Brock Purdy his flowers and apologize to the kid because I've given him a lot of shit. I just never believed in him. I was like, ah, who isn't good under Kyle Shanahan? Give me the give me the Lions to upset San Francisco. You don't believe that? Yes, I do. The Lions are playing great. Twenty eight. You know what? Let me take it back. Twenty seven, twenty four overtime. Now, how are you going to feel? Like, let's bring it back to the boys. How Lions are you going to feel if the Lions? Mm-hmm. Get to the Super Bowl. 
I'm going to feel like they, they care about culture up there. Finally, they finally found the right pieces. They brought in, they brought in the right guys. Their GM just got named GM of the year. They have built something up there. It's true. It just took them 50 years to get the right people because they were dumb and the Fords didn't know what they were doing. And finally the old lady got it right with the GM and Campbell and they got, and, and fortune, you got to get lucky. Here's Jared Goff, who literally plays in the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. They don't believe they 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 looked at him like he was Jeremy Lin in in L. A. Right, trade the man to the worst franchise in the in the they world. They sent him to Detroit to die. Let's be clear. Correct. And two years later, at some bitches four quarters away from leading the Lions to the Super Bowl, as a Cowboy fan, I won't feel it. I'll, no, I won't feel it. That's because di- look, man, this goes back to. <laughs> The culture of the Cowboys. I'm listening. As we've talked about all week. As a, you change quarterbacks, you can change coaches, you can change defensive ends, you can change safeties and everybody else. And the results are the same in Dallas. But Detroit does not have to worry about all that distraction and bullshit. And, I, and the staff that Dan Campbell brought in, the former Aggie, Aaron Glenn, their defensive coordinator, is a badass. They've just got... It's just shocking because they were so bad for so long. But right. all of a sudden, it's like that's not a fluke. This is not some. This is not you know Illinois Chicago run to the Final Four. The Lions are really good, and the NFL is hard to do well. It's hard to be good every year, but they're set up to continue to be good. Man, Goff is still in his prime. Yeah, it feels like Kawhi. They're good. It feels like Kawhi. You know, we sent him to Toronto to die. Yeah, and right, he, won, yeah. he won a title. <clears throat> <laughs> the, yeah, the Rams sent Goff to Detroit. Like, hey, man, let's just send him over here. And here he is back in uh, one game away from his second Super Bowl. Kawhi got the last. <laughs> he did. He did. That's pretty good, Kawhi. <laughs> that was such a shocking. I still, when I see that, when I, when I see that, I still can't believe that's coming out of that mouth yeah. with his body language. Because he goes right back into his robot. He's like. I don't even know where you're sitting now. Uh-huh. Well, he talks. He catches himself. He's actually a pretty funny guy. I'm and then sure. right back. Oh yeah, I'm a fun guy. Yeah. Anyway, God, fucking go on. Yeah. I hate it. I'm, I wish you hadn't brought that name. Up. My bad. So you got Detroit versus the Ravens. Yeah, Ravens. Detroit. Ravens, Super Bowl. I'm going Ravens 49ers. All right. Oh, I'm you know I'm I'm picking the underdog for sure. I just I like Detroit's momentum. They are. I don't think they're going to freak out of the moment. I. I'm going to trust that Jared Goff will get in enough the bay. running this is game. In the bay too. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I know they play in a dome, but they play in a lot of shitty weather True. too. That Lions team's going to be ready. If their their injuries could harm them for sure. Um, certainly I'm I'm going out on a limb. I realize that I'm probably going to be wrong, but in my heart, I'm rooting for them, but in my head, I still come up Lions. Lions by field goal. Detroit at the Super Bowl. And then the Ravens will just beat the shit out of them because they'll be, you know, be that'll a mis- be the it'll Ravens, be a mismatch. If that happens, that'll be the Ravens' third. Right. It's crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, think about that. And it won't be the last, I'll bet. That's a great organization. Maybe the best run organization yeah. in football now that, you know, everything's done in New England. And we got to rewind. To and JJ Watt brought this up a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Got to rewind to Lamar Jackson when the Ravens put him on the trade block, and two minutes after, six teams said we don't want him. Remember, mm-hmm. right before the season started, <clears throat> he was a pariah. Like, why you got your own agent? How dare you ask for this much money? Mm-hmm. We don't want him. There was black, but the email went out to all the owners and GMs. Don't sign him. We want to teach this kid a lesson. Mm-hmm. You don't dare ask us for fully guaranteed money. How dare you? And the kids away from his first super, a game away from his first Super Bowl. A lot of GMs should be fired. You think the Commanders who came out two minutes after he put him on the block couldn't use him? Or Atlanta? And there's a few teams that were like, "Oh hell no, we want nothing to do with him." Really? The Commanders? You want nothing to do with Lamar Jackson? This is an example of why the Ravens may be the best run organization in football. Or the 49ers. The, take your pick. Or yeah, they're up there. Take your pick. Oh, you're gonna hold out? You want to hire your own agent? F you, we're going to put you on the block. And maybe they never were going to trade him. Maybe they just weren't going, to let, they were. they weren't going to let him dictate the, the narrative. Absolutely not. Even if they hurt his feelings, this goes back again to bring it all back to the Cowboys. All, the Cowboys are scared to hurt people's feelings. They're pussies. They're soft. 
I didn't say that as reference to a woman. I said that in reference to a soft man. There's a difference. So I got to quit saying that word so much. But they are. They're pizzas. Say what you want, bro. You're good. They're pizzas. They're pussies. The Cowboys are scared to hurt people's feelings. The Ravens, in one calendar year, went from, well, screw you then. We'll just trade your ass to, hey, we're going to the Super Bowl. Only a well-run, ruthless, business-comes-first organization can do those kinds of things. Last January, he was on the block. Probably not, but publicly he was. Publicly. And they didn't give a damn about his feelings. And then what happens a year later? They're, they're four quarters away from <laughs> winning the Super from going to the Super Bowl. Right. Because they know what they're doing. They, it's a business. It's ruthless. Ozzie Newsom, when he passed that general manager's job down right. to the next guy, that guy is under the Ozzie Newsom old school business comes first, no bullshit mentality. John Harbaugh, he's a Harbaugh. You know, he's not. He ain't got time for bullshit. They're winners. He ain't got time for bullshit. And they make you tough. I and mean, it's just it's just part of their culture. Now, players had a lot to do with that, but they knew how to, they knew who to draft. Let's go get Ray Lewis. He's going to bring the culture to this team. Let's go get Ed Reed in here. Shit. Let's go get now. Let's go get Tony Siragusa. These badass guys that only all they care about is winning, and that's that's it. It's number one priority. We ain't worried about what club we're going to. I'm not. No, you know, none Ray, of that Ray shit. may have thrown a bloody jacket in a dumpster one time, but it still was never more important than winning. No matter what they do in their downtime, winning is first in Baltimore, and it's and whatever well, second is a distant second. Yeah, yeah. I, and it's about to pay off with a third championship, and with with three different quarterbacks, by the way, Dilfer. Flacco, and now about to be Jackson. The epitome of pro. And as a Cowboy fan, all I can do is watch it like porn, knowing that I'll never have a penis that big because I'm a Cowboy fan. Ah, see. All right, so there's our picks. Uh, speaking of my Cowboys, you going to you gonna make it? I don't know. We can, we can play best of. No, I'm have good. Have you pulled any best of take? No, no, not yet. That's more toward the end of the year. Don't make us sick. Uh, I, I've come in here sick before, and I get admonished by him. He gets mad because I'm sneezing all over the place. No, yeah, yeah. We got I, the capability to do remote. If one of you's sick, stay home. We'll set you up. We'll get you some equipment. Okay. Set you up and bring you in from your house. This sounds like you have an, you're having an allergy attack. I don't uh, think you, you're sick. No, I don't think so. No, I think you're fine. Uh, all right. Speaking of my Cowboys. The AP Player of the Year finalists were announced last night. AP Player of the Year. Yeah, you know how the NFL does. They announce their finalists, mm -hmm. and then they wait the Super Bowl week or whatever it is, and they announce the winners. Okay. So they announced four or five finalists per position. Dallas has four guys because they're so good in the regular season. They're the regular season wonders. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> If you're going to the Super Bowl once every five years the way the Ravens are, no, there's nothing wrong with that. So Dak Prescott, <laughs> is, Dak Prescott a, is an MVP candidate. No, I'm going to shut up. <laughs> well, we all know he ain't the MVP. He should be. He's a finalist. He should be. Regular season. Regular season award. Yeah, I know. It's not a playoff know. award. So he should be. He should be. Uh, he's also a finalist for Offensive Player of the Year. I don't think he'll win MVP. I think he might win Offensive Player of the Year. That might go to McCaffrey or CD mm -hmm. or Tyreek. Um, CD Lamb is a he's a finalist for Offensive Player of the Year. He's the most prolific regular season any Cowboy wide receivers ever had. I would I would remind his mom and everybody who's mad that yes, CD was awesome this year in the regular season. Holler at me when CD catches two touchdown passes like Mike did in the Super Bowl, and we'll talk about best season in Cowboy history. You had the best regular season in the history, statistically speaking. And then shit the bed, and you were pissed off and bitching early in the first quarter when it was only 7 to nothing. Was he bitching I don't know that what early? That I can't remember. Yeah, it, feels it was like, early. It feels like a month ago. He and Dak had words early in the game. I don't know what that was about. No idea. There was rumors going around during the game that he had some sort of personal issue he was dealing with. Who gives a shit? It's the playoffs. Let's go. I, I, that, none of that's ever been substantiated. I don't know if that's true or not. Me neither. But he's a, he's a finalist. Uh, Should be. Deron Bland. Who for had, what, DPOY? Yeah, Defensive Player of the Year, who broke the all-time record for interceptions in a season and pick sixes. 
and then didn't do shit for the last six games of the year and got his ass burned up and down the field at Jerry World in the playoff game, yeah, he ain't winning that. And Micah Parsons, the most overrated player in the NFL today, is the defense is a defensive player of the year finalist. And none of those guys will win any of that. Maybe Dak gets offensive player, but even that I don't think. No, I think that's gonna go to Miles Garrett. As it should. Yeah, he was so good, but so let's, dominant. Let's stay on defensive. Let's stay on the most overrated player in the league. It's Micah, I think. Who is it? No, no, no. I'm <clears> just trying <throat> to wrap my brain around it. Who else is overrated? Okay, so let, okay, so Dak Prescott is. Define what's your def. What when you think when you call someone overrated, what do you define that? Your definition. Everybody's definition is different. Your production and skill does not match how good everybody thinks you are. I think he's good. Your accomplishments do not match. I think he's really People good. People conjure up magic in their brain when really you haven't done you haven't done that much. That's interesting because I do think because to be overrated you have to be rated high. Do people rank? Well, hell, he's in the. You rank. have to be good to be overrated. Let's get that. I'm not yeah. saying he's not good. I think he's great. I think he's also in his defense, which we've talked about some this week, out of position. <sighs> He is. You said he's too little to keep playing defensive end for 17 weeks. Correct. He needs to go back to linebacker and stay there. As his brother astutely pointed out on Twitter this week. Oh, he did. Remember when Mike issued the oh. apology? His brother was like, they got him out of position. That's bullshit. He needs to be playing hey, linebacker. Twitter world. Would you rather have Micah Parsons play linebacker exclusively? And maybe we don't get 14 sacks. Maybe we're just going to get eight this year, but you're going to lead the league in tackles, and you're going to and, and the defense is going to be better because you stayed at linebacker. Isn't that the better scenario than putting moving his ass all around and he's worn out by November because he's small? This is the problem in today's NFL. If you can't get pressure, you can't win. So if when you, you get if somebody gonna, else, that gets pressure. Right. That's what I mean. If you if you're going to replace or move him. Mm -hmm then whoever's coming in there has got to be a dog. has got to get pressure. Well, by the last four or five games of the season with the play and the playoff game included, he wasn't getting any pressure. He didn't put up any numbers in the playoff game. He did not register like, maybe, maybe two half tackles. No pressure. In the last month of the season, he was, of all the edge rushers, he was bottom 10 in pressures and hurries. I just think he gets worn out. He's not physically capable of playing that position for 17 weeks and probably soon to be 18 because you know the NFL is at some point going to add an 18th game to make it even. Yeah. I, I Look, it, they're, they're in between a rock and a hard place because you need him to do what he does. But at the same time, mm -hmm. he's probably out of position. So that I don't know how they fix that. Well, you get overshown back next year. Maybe that helps. I don't know. Because, again, at the end of the day, though, <clears throat> if Dan Quinn doesn't get a gig, mm -hmm. he's probably coming back. But you still have the same issue you had going into this year. You can't stop the run. Mm -hmm. So I, I wrote this down. Where's Dan Quinn these days? Uh, he's Dan in, he's Quinn. interviewed with Seattle twice, right? So, okay, yeah, Seattle twice. I think he's supposed to talk to Washington this week. Nice. Um, Play I guess Mike McCarthy been, twice a year, that'd be fun. So, <laughs> if you're the commanders, do you hire Dan Quinn as your head coach? I wouldn't. I wouldn't either. They're not ready. for. They need a young, dynamic, offensive innovator there. They don't have any quarterbacks, first of all. Sam House sucks. He, he's overrated. That's harsh. He sucks. Okay, I'm not comparing him to every quarterback in America. I mean, no, I know. comparing him to all 30 other 31 other starters in the NFL. He's bottom half. At at best, he's Fair. 18, 19. Dan Quinn takes that job. He won't he'll he'll be fired in two years, like everybody else does up there. Seattle just fired Pete Carroll because they want a younger guy. Dan's almost as old as Pete Carroll. Dan's in his sixties. Well, they're bringing him back for number two. I well, I guess that's a buying sign. Ironically, I'm not even sure Dan Quinn fits in Seattle anymore with Geno Smith. That whole thing's overturned since he was there with the And there's no boom. Richard Sherman. There's no Michael yeah. Bennett. There's no Cam Chancellor. Yeah, I expect, man, look, man, I expect Dan Quinn back in Dallas as the defensive coordinator next year, which is fine. You want him back? I mean, the, the shine's off of him for sure. I don't know. Like everything, tell me who. Tell me who you're going to replace him with. I don't think he's. I don't. I think he's terrible. All of a sudden, I think he's. I think he's hamstrung by the shitty culture that comes with the people he works for. 
This was a bad loss all the way around, this Green Bay loss. This isn't losing to San Francisco in a divisional round in mm-hmm. San Francisco. Yeah. You got your ass kicked at home mm-hmm. by a team that had no business beating you like that. Mm-hmm. So most of the time when a coach is given the second chance, there's guys beneath him that have to take fall on the sword. Mm-hmm. So no one's falling on the sword then. We're bringing everybody back. Well, again, they're afraid to hurt people's feelings, Rudy. We give everybody 10 years to before we Somebody's get rid of them. Somebody's got to go. The way this season ended, someone's got to go. Like normally they say, hey, all right, coach, we'll keep you, but you got to get rid of your OC or you got to get rid of your DC. No, McCarthy's calling plays. I mean, I don't think Brian Schottenheimer is getting fired. They're going to run it back with everybody they have. Well, then this, we're going to be here talking about the same thing next year. Then. I know. Ronnie on the north side. Right there with you. I used to get all butt hurt when the Cowboys would lose, but now I sleep like a baby. Still want them to win, but I ain't losing sleep and damn sure ain't missing no work. Yeah, I mean, 20 years ago, they'd lose. That'd be lower than a cripple cricket's ass. Right. Now, okay. It was, again, we were, it was so bad and so embarrassing. We were laughing our ass off at the ringer watching the playoff game. It oh, was yeah. 27 to nothing. It was, it, all you could do is laugh at that point. It's all you could do. Dak Prescott out there down 27 to nothing, making more money than Davy Crockett. Mm. Here we go. And then he puts up the garbage time numbers. <laughs> yeah. He did he throw for 400 yards yeah, in the game? How yards. ironic is yeah. that? God almighty. And they were down 48 to 16 at one point. God almighty. Ugh. No All cowboy right. breakfast? No, I didn't do breakfast this year. No. LG, no cowboy breakfast? Hell no. Too early. I went the first couple years when I first moved here trying to be a good overrated. San Antonian. You're trying to be like, you're trying to fit in. Like, hey, let's not overrated. What... I just don't want to get up. I don't nah, want to go. Overrated. I don't want to go park and walk around a parking lot. Where is it now? Of course, the original Where's one's the real the original one. I know done. everybody does one. The original organization, they're done. They dissolved the foundation. Right. Yeah, it's done. Okay. Yeah. Because the original one was right there at Cowboys Dance Hall, right? It used to be anyway. Well, I'm not talking about the 70s or 60s, but. It was there for a few years, yeah. Yeah. And then you go to the men's club afterwards. And everybody be like, "Oh, honey, I'm going to do, I'm going into work," and you go to the men's club during the day. Is that how you rolled? It was just dumb. I and then, that's and what then it the was. mayor throws the the cow shit. They do the you, cow what? shit throwing contest. <laughs> what are you talking about? You never seen that at, at every cowboy <laughs> breakfast? It's they they pick up cow patties and they toss them like discuses and see mm-hmm. who can throw them the furthest. Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> He's mad. All I've right, never so no, after Cowboy Breakfast, <laughs> <laughs> bad San Antonian. I like tacos. It's traditional, man. Yo. Some traditions, even though they're oh, silly, you man. don't have to get rid of them. People like to do it. People love tradition in this city too. We do. We like. We're our a traditional it's family fine. town. It's fine. But you said f the Cowboy Breakfast. For me personally, f it, f going. I'm not hating on anyone. I'm not going to get mad because they threw the cow shit across the parking lot or whatever. I went the first couple of years. I was encouraged to go by Peter Bolger, my the program director. You were just trying to be, you were just trying to get ingratiated in the city. Sure, yeah. I wanted to experience all of Poodle San Antonio stuff, you know, and some things, some things were awesome. Some things were, that's cool. Some things are, that's dumb. I ain't doing that no more. And the, and the cowboy breakfast fell in the category of, eh, that's fine. I'm, I've done it. But it wasn't like, oh my God, six weeks to cowboy breakfast. Five weeks to cowboy breakfast, 48 hours to cowboy breakfast. So what, breakfast. are you a rodeo guy? Are you a fiesta guy? What are you? Which, which stuck? When you're figuring out your way around the city, which one stuck? Staying home. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I've had some great times at fiesta. Dude, I've had we nice hookups. And I, and I got spoiled here. The first year I moved here, I had... My own hotel suite overlooking I Niosa. I remember that. Were you in there? No, I On just the remember. I just level. remember you bragging about it. Yeah. So I was spoiled. I had my own suite overlooking Who everybody gave walking you that by. Shit? Where are they? Mark Sweet Hookups got me in that room. Who? Mark Sweet Hookups. I don't know him. I will. We can't. Ex- I can't tell you too oh, much about gotcha. Mark. You're going to need to know him. Are you a sneaker guy? Because he's the guy's going to hook was. you up. Mark Sweet Hookups. Mark Sweet Hookups. You do any collectibles, Legos, anything like that, he got you. The first okay. year I was here, he's like, hey, you need some new shoes. I'm like, well, no, I'm because I guess I had mentioned on the air that I was going to get new shoes for school for, for the kids. Right. He's like, I've got kids' shoes. Okay. So I 
reluctantly met him somewhere in a parking lot. He opens up the trunk of his car, and there's 50 pair of kids' shoes in there. Like, No box? Hell no, no box. I just I never knew they still had the clip holding the yeah, shoes yeah, together. Yeah. I appreciated it, you know. Anyway, he got me a nice suite. Uh, and then the following year, um, or two or three years later, I got I was up again in like the uh, right there in La Villita. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like were they again, they were were the where that store is. Oh yeah, yeah. I yeah, had I access. Exactly. They inv- the owners invited us to go up to the front. I was up on top of the building overlooking. So the days like butt to nut at Niosa, and <laughs> butt to nut. my turkey legs bumping into strangers. I don't. I got spoiled, man. But so yeah. you don't want to do it unless you can do it VIP style. I almost. So I've also just gotten older. I I admit no, this I is. I'm probably coming off as lame. Like if Why? I go to it's if I lame. go to Oyster Bake, I just I I can't be ass whipped, and it's hard not to get ass whipped. I don't care for Oyster Bake. Really? No. I've had a good time, you have to, but I have to get my mind around it. Okay, yeah. it's going to take an hour to get there. You're going to have to park. You're going to have to walk 17 blocks to get there. It's really not See that what great. I'm I mean, we're, half we're, oyster we're, we're ha- okay. We're having Damn. washed up one hit wonder bands. No, sir. I didn't like it. Naughty you know? by nature. No, Hip hop hooray. Ho, hey, ho. Yeah, I'm I mean, not that's fine. Bad. I'm going to taste the New Orleans. <laughs> I do taste New Orleans King Williams. <laughs> Yeah, love King Williams. I didn't taste New Orleans yeah, you, and King Williams. See, I used to and live the taste of the North Side. Lived in Southtown, right there on the edge of King Williams, so it would literally come down the street. So yeah. again, I had easy access. Oh, you lived in King Williams. That's right. Yeah, I didn't Rich have bastard. to get in the car, go anywhere. I didn't have to go mingle with the proletariat. They came to our neighborhood. Right. And so I just watched them come by. Shout right. out to the Zulu organization, and by the way, for Taste of New Orleans. Hang, I'm getting somewhere. <laughs> You're ahead of me. Sorry. Damn yeah. it. You're busting a nut when I ain't ready yet. I ain't got mine yet. Good night. Go ahead. I'm, I'm trying to build up to that. He didn't know. Let's talk it. about the Zulu. Go no, ahead. I want to, I want to pull the curtain back. Every, every rich person in King William... We all know that what you do, make sure you put cones in front of your house so, so none of the riffraff will park in front of wow. your house. Now we're riffraff. Can't raff. have that. Now we're I didn't riff- say you were. Well, I'm one of them. Are, are you? you talking about me? You are a member of the 26 most listened to talk show in America. Me so. You got to so. come over. So. It's okay. So. Come over so. here. We need to diversify the hood anyway. That hood. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you hear this shit? <laughs> I didn't sign up for this shit, LG. <laughs> No, oh, yeah, like I'm, I'm not, with I, I don't mean you're allowed I'm to come, with come into the big house, yeah, Rudy. Get to your point. My you bad. can even sleep in the bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? No, I I'm come fucking Samuel Jackson. The Go best ahead. time I've ever had is Taste of New Orleans. Of course. That's where I'm leading to. Because it's black people. The cool people. Many are, bl- many are black. Shout out to Mr. Hearn. Well, it's more, it's more diverse now than ever. No, I love the. I don't care. No, it used I don't to care be, if it's ninety nine percent. It's a great event, yeah. and we were invited. Like again, see, I get hooked up. You got ups. to do your show there. Yes, I was I, when I Me saw and that. Me did the show. They're right like, in front of the stage. You're like, why them white motherfuckers get to go over there? It, I said that. I said that to myself. Mr. Hearn asked us outside looking in. I was like. I was an honorary brother for the day. I was like, how in the fuck? I told him, give, it, I give me that round there. cap y'all wear. Yeah, I'm like, yo, I've been spending money at this damn place. <laughs> For 20 years. Yeah. Never got asked to do my show out there. Ever. Black men ask me to do that. I so know. don't get mad at me. I didn't get mad at you. Okay. The Zulu the Zulu organization asked us to. I know. That. And I was, I was, I was it was that, a head scratch. Not only that, paid us to go out there. You see, you see what I'm saying? This is some bullshit. That's dope. No, we're, that's dope. We're, no, we're bringing communities together. Well, damn it, we better get asked this year. Well, and I, I'm, I'm going to tell you, Mr. Hearn's excited that you're on this show. I can tell you Shout that. Shout out to Mr. Hearn. Yeah, Mr. Hearn. H-E-A-R-N. Shout out Hearn. to Mr. Hearn. I Those know are some who good he, dudes. I, he doesn't know me, but I know Mr. Those Hearn. Those are some good dudes over there. And uh, I'll be frank with you. I never heard of him until two years ago. You see what I'm saying? But yet you're getting paid to go hang with him. Because You I, see what I'm saying? But what, you see what I'm I saying? I was just my ignorance. I came to the light. And then, <laughs> then we made we made money. <laughs> Uh, a black man got a head coaching job in the NFL. Are we happy about that? Um, Shout out to I'm, Raheem I'm, Morris. I'm happy, but I'm ready for GM. Now I, we need GMs and executives and owners. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Coaches are cool. <clears throat> Don't get it twisted. Coaches are cool, but coaches will come and go. No matter what color you are, right? If you suck, you will be gone. You know what I mean? I'm a firm believer in that. 
You know, now more, I'm on to executives. You know, for years it was, if you're a black dude, you better make it work the first time because you'll never get rehired. I'm glad to see this is a rehire. This is his second Normally job. they don't get one. Normally they don't get one. Herm Edwards was fortunate enough to get one. There's not mm-hmm. many black yeah, coaches yeah, yeah. get the second but go it's, around. It's good. So I'm happy for her. Uh, and even Morris. got the job over the GOAT. I, well, everything I've read told me that Belichick wanted the job in the whole Atlanta. <laughs> He wanted yeah, I wonder what went on in the interview that made them say, no, we want Raheem Morris, not Bill Belichick. Bill wants too much power. Rich McKay's the GM, and Bill wanted to know, okay, if Rich is going to be the GM, yeah. where do I fit in when it comes to buying the groceries? And they're like, well, you're going to have some input. I think that was, you know, Belichick's used to having all the power. Yeah. You can't spend 40 years. He wants years. to shop for the groceries. Correct. He wants to, yeah, he wants to shop, but I would buy them, use them. I would too if I was Belichick. I've earned it. Yeah. Well, he's like, also going to be on the street and not have a job. But why would you interview Bill Belichick knowing that's what he's gonna want? Like before I get before I put him on the plane. Before I put him on a plane, if I'm Rich McKay, Mm -hmm. I say, Hey Bill, are you gonna want to shop for the groceries? If the answer is yes, I would just tell you, hey, let's just both save ourselves time. That's not gonna happen. You know what I mean? Like let's Mm -hmm. let's be men, let's let's speak transparent. (laughs) Yeah, man. If you want power, I'm not gonna even fly you out here because I'm doing the grocery shopping. Like why waste why waste each other's time? Because he's Bill Belichick. Why His not? Proper respect. Spend the day with the guy, get to dump, talk football, strategy, shit like that. True. Can't hurt. It's Bill Belichick, you know. Um Seattle and Washington are the only two jobs left. I don't see Belichick taking either one of those or being Seattle offered Washington. either one. Washington's desperate. They may they may throw the moon at now, him. Now Washington, I may give him power at Washington. But he it's gonna take five years to get them fifteen wins if you're Belichick going to Washington. They're bad. It's unfortunate, but they're Seattle's bad. right there. Seattle's got a chance. Is he going to go on there? But see, that's also they wanted others to have more power in decision making. <laughs> Pete Pete Carroll had all the decision making in Seattle, along with their GM, kind of concurrently. They were together. That's a power GM they got up there. Is he going to let Belichick come in there and supersede him in power after he won a Super Bowl and he's been there a long time? And I just I think Belichick's going to spend the year out of coaching and then next year come back and. Coach the Eagles or the Cowboys or Did some Did you shit. want him? In Dallas? Of course. Provided you let him come in there and be him and stay the hell out of the way. Well, we know that was never going to happen. Well, there it but is. But you wanted him, though. Of course. You would have open-armed him. Because the, the things that he brings intangibly, culture, again, that's the word of the week for me, they don't have. He is perfect for that job. <laughs> An established franchise quarterback – Talk shit about Dak all you want. That's what he is. Established franchise QB. Good defense. Sure. They've won 36 games in the last three seasons. All they need is better culture and toughness, and that's what Bill would bring to the room. And he'd also he'd, he'd, he'd get rid of people that weren't down to get tough. We're getting tough now. If you can't get tough and come with us on this new thing get where football's out. first, right. fuck off. And I, there's, I don't think Jerry wants – Jerry's not going to do that at 81 years old just to desperately go – no, Jerry's Jerry would rather die doing how he's doing now then go bring in Belichick and let somebody come save your ass. It's stubbornness. That's all it I is. Agree. Big Al with a five dollar donation. Oh. Thank you, Big Al. Mike Taylor has lived in all the bougie areas of San Antonio. Is that true? No, I've never lived in the Dominion. I've but never you even lived been, in King never Williams. Even, King Williams, Terrell Hills. When you look at the Alamo price Heights. point, the price point is right. Some of those houses that you buy are Dominion prices. I didn't own the house I was in. Just happened to oh, live in that, in that hood now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, the, I've never even stepped foot on the property of the Dominion. Tried to one time and got told, mm-mm, because the, the, there's a gate with the guards. So I got to do, speaking of spoiled, the last couple of years I got to do Taste the North Side for free. Mm-hmm. And not this past year, but the year before it was in the Dominion. That's now, why do, I get, why do I get laughed at when I mention things I've done? And all of a sudden, oh, by the way, I go to the Taste of the or- North Side every year for free. First of all, Taste of the North Side is not Fiesta. Own it. It's not fiesta. Own your stuff. We get privileges doing this. Yeah, it's shit. not fiesta though. No, I know. It's just a, it's a party that's a go so happens to be during fiesta, but that's not fiesta. Did somebody come up and ask you to go refill their tea? Oh, like they thought I was the help. <laughs> Fuck no. That was, that was the quickest way to get slapped in that bitch. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. No, go no, ahead, no. Nobody ahead. did that. No, 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 no. But no, it was it's bougie as hell though. It's a good time, but it's bougie as hell. And tell me what's wrong with that. What? I see y'all's posts. Y'all are bougie. I'm not. I guarantee you, if we looked in my closet and your closet, they they would the, whose bougie would not be me. Well, don't you don't judge me by my clothes. I'm not judging you. I'm telling you, it's bougie. 
<laughs> and I'm also telling you there's nothing wrong with that. No, I know. I am bad I and like bougie. I like nice shit. I'm bad and bougie. I'm a, I'm a minimalist, but the things I have... You're a minimalist, for I sure. I like nice things, but I don't need 50 of them. I bought a nice pair. It's a $150 pair of Nikes. I've had them for almost two years. It's about time to upgrade them. And I yes, wear my, them four times a week, you know? But you don't want to spend no money on tennis. Neither do I. That's just it. I'm, I'm, I'm past yeah. the age of spending money on right. tennis. I if, want to spend money on... I'll spend money on dress shoes... Because I did do that this I'll year. I'll do that. Yeah. I'll so spend I'll, money on dress shoes because you know, I may need to host an event. I may need to go somewhere. I may mm-hmm. need to dress up for a client. Correct. That's more important to me than tennis shoes. I'm not rich enough to worry about tennis. I went to, well, we went to a wedding. It was a very nice wedding. Nina's niece. Yeah. And I had a nice suit and nothing to wear on my feet. So I went and I spent a few bucks on some nice shoes. I'll wear them twice a year, but they'll stay nice. And I'll wear them for 10 years. Right. That's just it. Like, I'll go buy another nice pair of Nikes when these finally start getting holes in the bottom, and I'll wear those for three or four years. So I, I get bougie shit, but I, I, I use it. I don't have cars sitting in a parking lot no, that I don't either. drive. You don't have a boat anywhere, jet skis, No, if this house. thing If this thing blows up monetarily, I've been poor so long and such a minimalist for pretty much all my life. Like, I'm not even sure you would see a change in my dress if this thing blows up, this show. What I, I would probably I'm get it. I need a decent car. My car is a rag, but that's it. I, but but it, what, I'm not going to go to Maserati. Fuck a car payment. No, I'm going to pay cash. If we're, if we're I'm talking about blow up, blow up. Oh, yeah, yeah. If we're top different. five on Spotify. I'm getting an electric Range Rover. That's cool. I am too. That's fuck crazy, that. crazy you said that. Fuck that. An electric Let's Range buy Runner. depreciating assets and fucking go broke in three years. No, 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 and no, tell no. Our story. I'm buying a nice Range Rover, but that's it. I won't move. I'll stay in the same apartment until that lease. Runs I don't out. believe that. I don't believe that. I would not move. Not not immediately. I'm not gonna go buy a mansion. I wouldn't do that shit. I'm so I, used to being poor. I, don't I wouldn't know, I wouldn't know how to be yeah. rich. You don't believe that? I don't believe you'd stay in the same apartment. You got to get out of apartment life. Well, no, I will, but I'll go get an, a decent home. Yeah. This house, it wouldn't be much nicer than this house that LGs that LG we're in has now. A great crib. It's a nice crib. Yeah. I don't need a massive ass. No, I don't want no mansion, and no. I don't want two stories. No, absolutely not. Two not. stories, huh? So fuck two stories. Yeah, fuck a two story. The Drew Show, two dollar donation. Thank Joe, you, Drew. Joe Biden's economy killed the cowboy breakfast. Jesus. Okay, that's bullshit. He's just having fun. I know. He's just he's goofing. Uh, he's about to type something. What happened to the cowboy organization? They just quit making money. I think they just had too much competition. Well, they got with all tired these of yeah, people. Every, yeah, that's the thing. Some every, things just run their course. That yeah, but a bunch suck. of people started doing their own cowboy breakfasts. Right. So right. it's like, well. Tex-Mex Frank, $4.99. Thank you, Tex. Congrats on a big week. Cowboy's girlfriend took my credit cards and flew to Cancun. <laughs> She's hanging out with the Eagles and the Packers and Ted Cruz. Thank you, Tex-Mex. Damn, what's up with all the politics today? I don't know. Is this all the time with Thunderdome? Is Thunderdome political? Uh, in a political year, which we just entered. I know. I just got my voter cards in the mail. Oh, yeah? They're yellow. What does that mean? You know, the little card. It's yellow. Oh, oh the yellow voter card. Yeah, 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 yeah. George, fellas, with what we know of McCarthy coming back and most likely Dak not going anywhere, is next season their absolute last chance to prove us wrong? Honestly, mm. I don't give a shit. McCarthy has the opportunity to get fired in season. Yeah. There's a good no chance question. if it goes bad, he will get fired in season. We'll do this Book segment. It. Maybe let's do this maybe next week. We got two weeks in between the Super Bowl. I'm listening. Because I need I need to be able, I need to go do some more research and read up on this. But because I want to come up with some definitive, I want to come up with some I've got to, I'm gonna make a thesis statement, but I gotta go get some I gotta go get the body of this essay. When you start looking at their roster and who's available for free agency and who they may consider releasing and Dax deal, all this kind of thing, and with the way the NFL operates, this thing is setting up for an eight or nine win season next year. They're going to be middle of the pack, 500. Everybody, and then everybody's going to be gone. That's the way it's setting up. I want to go get some, def- I need to go get some definitive stuff in front of me. I need to get some numbers and shit. That's not. Yeah, I, don't we'll want, do I don't want to beat people down with a lot of stats nah, we're and good. money. But we may need to. I just, sometimes it's necessary. They've won twelve games three years in a row. At some point, at some point, yeah, the, the your law window. Averages. Yeah, it's too late. You fucked up. You should have won more games already. But I think they've ruined their opportunity. All right, it's time for the punch of the day, presented by the law office of Orlando Kill. Ooh. 
the a law office of Orlando Kell can help you with anything you need when it comes to needing a lawyer, especially when you need a family lawyer. Orlando specializes in that, divorce, marriage settlements, changing a decree, whatever it might be. The law office of Orlando Kell, the official family lawyer of Thunderdome, and this show, it's in the building. You can hit up uh, Orlando via email or phone at 210-775-4995 or email him directly at orlandokelllaw at gmail.com. Orlandokelllaw at gmail.com. What I'm, up, Lando? I'm, I'm punching Fartman, the guy on the airplane. What happened? <gasps> few, thing, few things whip my ass more than... Thank you. Few things beat me down, man, more than fucking assholes who do stupid shit on airplanes. You know? What are you drinking? Water. I don't love flying anyway. Uh, I, I, I fly more now than ever because I go back and forth to see the kids a lot. And with where we are in this world and how screwed up people are and things and, you know. I got four kids to feed. And also, just still, even though it's been 20 plus years, just 9-11. Post 9-11, I don't understand. And it's happening more and more now where people act stupid on airplanes. And I have no tolerance for bullshit by anybody on an airplane. Do y'all see this fart man story? Yeah. Some asshole. All right, so I'm going to paraphrase. This is Christella Jones in the Express News. Alleged farting man removed from American Airlines flight to Austin. (laughs) Passing gas on a flight could be embarrassing for some, she writes, but apparently not for one passenger who was headed to Texas. A recent American Airlines flight from Phoenix to Austin got delayed after a gassy passenger reportedly used profanity and had to be removed. The smelly incident, which occurred January 14th, was documented by an Austinite on Reddit. A representative from American Airlines clarified to my essay that the passenger was not removed because only of passing gas but rather the profanity that the passenger used to disrupt the flight. Somebody, I guess, he kept farting real nasty. And somebody, I guess, made, made a comment, so he started cussing them out. Just looking to be aggressive, looking to fight somebody. Austin Redditor Glam Galactics shared their eyewitness account for the flight, writing, quote, I was seated near the row where this situation occurred. I'm simply sharing this because it's somewhat entertaining and I do not film anything usually. This guy was audibly upset when he first got on the plane. He's like talking to himself. Oh, fuck this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bitch, oh, he's like, he's in Are a we bad sure mood. this guy's a YouTuber? I have no idea. Okay, go ahead. Gets on the plane. People that saw this have told the paper that it looked like he may have been hung over or just sick. <laughs> Had a rough day, whatever. But he's like grumbling. Oh, God damn it. And he sits down. And he's just like fucking hell, just cussing like, like to himself. Then just starts busting ass. <laughs> okay, whoever wrote that article left out a ton of details. I'm not having. Well, I'm paraphrasing. Okay. I haven't read the whole thing. Well, yet. yeah, that's not, <clears throat> there's a lot more to it. And who the hell uses Reddit as a source? Me. Don't no, we? Are, it's wait, a don't you put on my, Reddit. Don't you put it's our right. show co- topics on Reddit all the time? Yeah, but you don't use somebody who makes. It, it, there's no credible source there. It's one person's comment. It's like somebody made a Facebook post. And they're calling it a source. Well, it the sounds like this guy was a, This guy sounds like a total dipshit. He got on the plane and he was complaining about everybody eating food. He said, "Why are y'all all eating smelly food at the same time?" And they and everybody started talking shit to him. Mm-hmm. And then he was like, "All right, we'll smell this." And, and he busted farted. ass. Yes. God. Now that's the detail. Now this is that's the, no dignity, man. Now I've, hold on. Now I'm trying to get to where I'm going. If I'm a passenger on that plane. Fuck turning around or landing somewhere we're not supposed to land. Yeah, like they came arrest, back. See, that's what I'm saying. Arrest the motherfucker when we get to where we're going. Agreed. Like, I don't want to delay the flight. Like, I don't like, okay, he's farting. It smells like shit in here. He's cussing everybody out. Like, look, I will fight through it. And then once we get off, I just want to get to where I'm going is the most important thing. Like, why do we got to go back? Now I'm inconvenienced because of farting. Yeah. I'm like, no, dude. Like, even if he is and he's an asshole, arrest him when we get to where we're going. Why are we turning around? Or stop the plane, let the cop car come out to the tarmac. They hadn't taken off yet. Oh. Yeah, they hadn't taken off yet. So he backed them, went back to the gate. No, fuck that. Bring or the throw car his get ass that, out the window. Get that son. Yeah, throw his ass out the window. Get that. We I am sick of we gotta have no tolerance for assholery on airplanes. But how it's can you bullshit. fart on 
to, like on command. On, yeah, how how's that happen? I couldn't. Yeah, like I have to ha- literally have gas. I can't be like, yeah. oh, okay, you like y'all this? eating on the plane. I'm gonna just start letting loose. Like I don't, right. I don't have I that. I fart ability. a lot. I'm a farter, but not on. I can't just do it because you ask me to. Right. Yeah, I gotta like, have. A, I have, have a. Off. I gotta have a gut bubble. Didn't you just recently like wake yourself up by farting on a plane? I did. Well, <laughs> I thought it was. I thought it was other people, but then I realized maybe it had been. I don't know. I haven't confirmed. Okay. Last time I flew to Hawaii, I took the overnight flight back home. So I'm tired. I'm overnight flying over the ocean. I'm just trying to get some sleep. Right. And I kept smelling like raw eggs. I'm like, it was your ass. I'm like, it was someone, coming from your ass. And I'm thinking, somebody needs to quit fucking farting. This is gross. It's real quiet. Everyone's asleep. It's like, it's an overnight flight. And I'm like, and I kept smelling. I'm like, what the fuck? This person must have like butt polyps or something. Maybe they have an illness. And then I realized, <laughs> holy God, that's me. <laughs> I was like doing SBDs, silent but silent deadly. Yeah. And I was, I was unaware of it. So I, I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure the reason why it was so in my nostrils because it was, it was my ass doing it. Unfortunate. I had three. Well, I see. Here's the problem. I knew it was an overnight flight, and I wanted to try to get some sleep. It's so hard to sleep on a plane anyway. No, it's not. Not well, over, I but, it's a, I had, but it had been over about an overnight flight. I mean, I'm not able to. I basically didn't. I mean, you're sitting up asleep all for. It's an eight hour flight. And so I had a couple of beers at the at the airport. Beers give you gas? Yeah, if I drink too much. Yeah, I rip ass a lot when I'm drunk. If I haven't had enough sleep, I, you don't you don't Only rip ass that, when you when you get drunk. Like uh, one of having a hangover for me is I bust ass all day long. Oh no, I don't know why that is. Only thing that gets me like that is a uh, movie popcorn. Really? Movie popcorn makes me gassy. Super. Do you get the buttery kind or the like healthy? Not too kind? much. See, okay. I wasn't a butter guy. My wife turned me into butter. The butter is what gives you gas. I don't like the butter. Me neither. Not the, like the, my, not the over. Yeah, like yeah, it's, just, it's already good enough. I ain't got to like. Yeah. Then you then you, then you then you take the spigot and you let it leak all over the place. <laughs> you go home. You got like yeah, yeah it's I, nasty. I, no, it's na- I agree. It's nasty. Anywho, Anna, you're not nasty. That yeah. popcorn's nasty. Yeah, so yeah, punch. Yeah, yeah. Punch fart man. Yep, punch him. That's my punch of the day. You got a punch today? Yeah, I'm gonna punch the the Milwaukee Bucks basketball team. Okay. I they didn't came, see this. Yeah, they came out last night and they had the pregame music on and they were dancing and having a blast. Uh-huh. I took that as them celebrating Adrian Griffin being fired. Yeah, it was. It's at least bad. It's bad it's body in bad language. Taste. Yeah, it's, it's in yeah. bad. It's in you poor just taste. got your boy fired. Let's yeah, not this, this act was like the night before clowns. last. It was the night before yeah, last. That's not but cool. yeah. What's up with the Bucks? They're thirty and thirteen for God's sake. They, they got they two hated, of the best players in the world, and Adrian they got Griffin. issues. They hated them clearly. They showed it last night, see, well, the night before. It, it could be that Giannis is immature, which we talked about this Giannis week. Giannis came out said, "I love the guy." Of course, no, no, he's didn't. lying his ass he's off. He's lying. Yeah, it could be both. Giannis is a bit immature, but Adrian Griffin also was in over was his ready. head. Yeah, both things can be true. Yeah. You can't make your debut as a coach. I didn't with understand Giannis, that. High. And they brought in Dame Lillard. That's a Doc Rivers type job. I know you don't love Doc, but at least he's experienced enough to handle these stars. Egos for sure. Yeah, I think Milwaukee was going for their Spo. They're going for their Nick Nurse in the Adrian Griffin hire. Oh, maybe. Yeah, but I never understood the hire to begin with. Griffin can coach. He's been one I mean, of the best thirty and thirteen for years. Yeah, well, like they sucked. I don't know what happened. Well, that, so they realized this, this acting like, ah, we're fine. Right. Yeah, that's that's rubbing it in. It's like you have a breakup, and the next day you post on Facebook, you're on With a your date. New chick. Come that's on, man. Foul. We know that they're still in your head doing that bullshit. That's a good one. LG, you have a punch today? Uh, yeah, I want to punch you. Whoa. Okay. <gasps> Poor K. Because uh, after I explained to you to not use screenshots or screen recordings anymore. I noticed you posted their haircut video on Facebook. You screen recorded it from your phone and then put it on Facebook. So let me tell you what this is like. It's like Picasso painted you a painting, right? And gives you the original. He's so mad his lips are clear. Gives his you lips the original quivering. painting, right? Yeah. You take a picture of that <laughs> painting. You put the painting in the closet. Then you frame the picture you took of the painting and put it on the wall. That's the equivalent of what you did. With my video that I shot in 4K HDR. <laughs> Why would I do that if you're just going to screen record a 720p low resolution video, then crop it down where you cropped out the Love yelling. You Hard logo 
chopped it in half. Wait a minute. And then put it on your Facebook. Oh, you, I, I, I posted what you sent me. Right. No. What did you I didn't. do? What you, am I you supposed to do? You recorded your screen. It's hard to piss off LG, I would think. I recorded my screen. Yes, and then you cropped it down. A video. Yes. A bus get, okay. Oh, I deleted it, but I don't have it anymore. I don't. Oh, no, no, wait, you didn't I still have it. it. It's no, it's there. this one. That video right there is what you that sent. That is in your camera roll. Look at the Facebook post. Okay. What did I that do? That is 9 by 16 aspect ratio. Yours is 1 by 1. You turned it into a you square. Sure now, now, oh, my God. It's math class. Dude, I don't know what all that shit Let means. Let me go down here. So you, you get punched for down. degrading the quality of my work. I'm a, <laughs> God. Good Lord. Uh, excuse me. That was a drop. Um, I don't even see it anymore. Uh, just please don't use screen Oh, here it is. That's what anymore. I put on Facebook. Yeah, look. Look at the top. See the Love You Hard logo? Can you even see it? Well, no. No, because you cropped it out. Oh, I don't know how to. I don't. I, don't, I didn't crop it out on purpose because I don't know what I'm doing. So allow. If you want to post something, ask me to do it. <laughs> but I don't want you to have to do it every time. If you ain't gonna do it right, don't do it at all. Well, I'm gonna call you and make you walk me through it next time. Sounds right, like fair enough. This shit, bitch. Uh, hey, I'm trying. God Almighty. <laughs> Drew show with another five dollars. Reddit, social media, bathroom graffiti, or 100 percent credible sources. Don't get so butthurt over the Biden comment, Mike. Inflation is math. No, I'm not butthurt. I just think it's stupid. Fair. Yeah, I just I don't know. It's just it, you're gonna blame Cowboys Breakfast on Joe Biden. That's a bit of a stretch. The economy's in the shitter. On his watch. Okay, but that you can't blame everything that decides to no, shut no, down. No, no, no. I'm just saying. I'm just calling a spade a spade. I'm not saying it's. I don't even know politics, dude. All I know is I get up in the morning, I go to work, mm-hmm. and then I go to another I work, and then another work. I don't give a fuck who's in office. I'm just saying right now the economy's in the shitter. I on pay his watch. less, and I love Drew. He's probably giving us a thousand dollars in tips this year. I'm not. I'm not anti but, anybody. Me either. But I will say this: while I'm aware of the economy, um. I pay less attention to politics now than at any time in my adult life because I've given up on it. I, I, I look Same. at American politics in the way that I look at the Dallas Cowboys. I'm absolutely apathetic. I'll pay attention, not as much as I used to, but I ain't losing sleep because all of them suck ass, both of them. <laughs> there are going to be days you hear me come on here and, and talk shit about Joe Biden. Fair. There's going to be days you come in here and tell me that Donald Trump, I'm going to come on here and say, I don't think Trump should be the president. And I also don't think Joe Biden should be the president. You're asking me to, you're asking me to choose between two shitty ass octogenarians that I don't think either one are good for anything. However, that being said, admittedly, I haven't paid as much attention to the day to day details in a couple of years. I don't care. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a man from Texas, United States, earthling. I'm running a business now trying to talk about sports and shit. We'll mention politics if necessary, but honestly, man, they all suck to me. And I no offense to anybody in town. I mean, the great Ron Nuremberg, who has been a, a frequent guest of this show is a Thunderdomer, follows me on Twitter the whole bit. I like Ron. Fine personally. independent. I, I follow Ron and I because he's he's our guy. I support guys locally. Um, I I'm not one of these straight ticket people who will come in here and slurp the asses of one party and everything the other party does sucks. That ain't me. No, it's kind of like my college football talk. But people but they happen to catch you no, when you mention that. You're a Longhorn hater. If I come on here and say one day, oh, I don't I don't blame Joe Biden. Oh, Taylor's a liberal asshole. What are, he's one of them typical liberals. He don't know shit. He's an idiot. He's a moron. Then you didn't hear earlier when I made fun of the guy for whatever, whatever. Right. So you can come in here and pick and choose, but I just I am not I don't get caught up in that. And the more Americans that stop this polarization shit and um this straight ticket bull buffoonery and this gang mentality we have in politics, the more Americans that stop doing that, then we'll finally get better as a country. All these know this. Do y'all, do you really want civil war? I almost feel like some people do anyway. That has nothing to do with you, Drew. That just, that put that in my head. I'm not butt hurt over nothing. I just, 
I'm not going to blame the cowboy breakfast on the president. That's insane. That's just stupid. You're being a goofball, Drew. All right, show brought Agreed. to you in part by RNR Auto Glass. What up, RNR? If you get so angry at that damn Joe Biden, you go up there and you're like, God dang it, I don't want to hit my wife. So, boom, I punch a hole in my windshield because that damn Joe Biden, it's his fault. It's Joe Biden's fault that my car is out of gas and I can't afford it anymore. Maybe the gas stays high, but at least you can go get your glass fixed at RNR Auto Glass, the only place to get your glass fixed in Auto San Antonio in the crater area. They don't give a damn who the president is, or the mayor for that matter. They're just a small, hardworking, blue-collar family in this town doing hard blue-collar things in this town. And they are the masters when it comes to repairing the glass in your car, whether you drive a sedan, a van, SUV. I don't think they do airplanes, but short of an airplane, if it's got four tires and it's legal to drive on the streets of San Antonio, they got the inventory. Go in there and mention me. Uh, when you get in there, mention the Taylor Especial or in the building or even DJ LG or mention Taylor sucks at Facebook post, whatever. They'll reference us anyway, anyhow, and you'll get a Taylor discount. It's R&R Auto Glass right there by the airport at 281 in Nakoma. So if you're trucking northbound on 281, uh, take a la- uh, exit Nakoma, take a left. They're just across 281 from the airport, about a quarter mile down on the left-hand side. It's the only place to get your glass fixed in your car. It's R&R, 210 340 210-340-2588, R&R Auto Glass. Rudy brought nice. this to my attention this morning. I have no idea. Today is the four-year anniversary of the death of Kobe Bryant. Kobe! And his daughter and all those folks on that Six ill-fated others. helicopter. And right before I, it's, COVID. I didn't realize it was, you know, it's funny. Not a week goes by that I don't look at a Kobe clip on YouTube. They don't feel like he's been dead because you see him. I see him. I, he's all through my algorithm. Same. Because I'm a groupie. Same. I loved Kobe Bryant. Spurs, a lot of Spurs fans don't like that. I because They but, all ended up respecting him. They sure. didn't like him. But yeah. I love that man. Even when he was a Laker, when he played here, I was rooting for the Spurs, but watching him with all the admiration. <laughs> the last time I saw Kobe play, it was years ago. It was a TNT game. And, I'll, and and so there's you know there's Mike Breen or Reggie Miller or whoever's calling the game, you know, or maybe it might might have been Marv Albert. It's been so long, so it's a tight game back and forth. Spurs Lakers. Jim Bob was with me, and um, Kobe has the ball, and Roger Mason Jr.'s guarding him. Kobe literally takes his finger and goes, "Come out here." He did that. This was big news the next day on the show. It was pretty cool. So Kobe's outside of the three-point line about five feet and looks at Mason and, and tells him, come out. Lets him close on him. Because, you know, that's Kobe. Yeah. Has a wide-open look, but no, fuck you. Come over here and get in my face. So I want him, I'm not going to shoot till you get here. Bust a shot over Roger Mason Jr. And as Kobe goes down the court, he looks at the TNT guys and he just goes. Oh, big nuts. Man, big nuts. Yeah, I remember that game. I went ape shit. And I'm here. I am like, fuck, here I'm a Spurs fan. <laughs> a Spurs fan. And How a- do you not watch that guy and just fucking just that's that's the thing. And this goes back to Cowboys and Spurs and Whoever. UTSA. And Spurs. I'm not condoning that you have to be as maniacal with your competitiveness as he was. Right. But boy, I would rather be maniacal about my competitiveness than be a soft ass. Like we see all the time with all these pro guys that get to the league and getting by on talent and got all this money and don't put the work in. LaMarcus Aldridge comes to mind mm. um, because the Spurs had the same mentality. They just weren't as gregarious as Kobe no, was about like showing. they were at all. They were every bit as we want to murder you. The Spurs were like a no, they were killers. They were like an assassin. For sure. They The Spurs, they would crawl up on the building – and wait for you to come by in the motorcade, sorry, and blow your head off, and you never, you have, you never saw it coming, and you'll never know who did it. Then you just got, you get in your car, you drive home, and you go watch TV, and you don't need the attention. The, build, the building or the grassy knoll? What's that? Was it the building or the grassy knoll? Oh, see, here we go. It doesn't matter. 
the point being, they were they didn't need all the attention, but they had every bit of the eat your eat your shit. Yeah, as the Lakers did, which is why we had such great series with those two. I think it's still, and I, think, I loved Kobe. Um, I did too. I think uh, Golden State and Cleveland developed a rivalry because they played in the finals four straight years, but nothing really still comes to Lakers Spurs in that part of the time. In that time, God, for that, that time great. frame, the city was shut down. But no, that is a weird. Twenty twenty was just strange in general. You know, obviously. We're talking about it today, Kobe mm-hmm. and his daughter passing in the helicopter. But then, you know, two months later, the world shut down. So 2020 was strange. So, yeah, we're four years removed from that. But mm-hmm. shout out to Kobe, man. That was my guy. I was not a Laker. I was a Laker fan because of mm-hmm. Nick Van Exel, right? I loved Nick Van Exel. Okay. And then Kobe got there and made me stick around. Uh-huh. And being a groupie of Kobe's, you ended up being a, obviously a Laker fan. Mm-hmm. But um, once he retired in, what, 2016? Yeah, because he retired same year as Tim and Kevin Garnett. Mm-hmm. I was done with them at that point. I think I was so much. I was so impressed with post NBA Kobe too. He changed that. He took that. He took that ferociousness and channeled it for like positivity. Yeah, he, my, he he mentored a bunch of guys and never said anything. We didn't know until he died that all the guys he was mentoring because yeah. they finally told us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But even as a dad, as a man, I mean, he won an Oscar for his short film he made, the cartoon or the whatever. Little book, it's cartoon, yeah, all I mean, that just shit. The stuff he was doing was just—he was just a baller at life. <laughs> and I have found myself, and I'm not trying to be cheesy. It's true. Like since I went on my own in June, and we started doing this, mm-hmm. um, I find myself like I've—I've I've listened to a lot of Kobe stuff on YouTube, read a lot of things oh, he said. For because it motivates me as a guy to stay tough, to stay the course, even on the hard days, even when we don't make money or LG's yelling at me again over Facebook posts. Jeez. It teach I have a, I, I try to channel that inner Kobe um just to just to get through the days. And I I'm no bullshit. I find Kobe to be a bit of a motivational speaker in my head often in the in the last couple of years, especially in the last six, seven months. So I'm so appreciative of Kobe Bryant's existence. And I'll be able to tell my grandkids, I saw Kobe's first ever start in the NBA. You did? What, it was, was it Mavericks? The, Mavericks. They were playing in Dallas. I had credentials for the for KNTU radio. <laughs> good North change. Texas. Huh? So it's a good change. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's a jazz station, but it's the, yeah. co- it's the college station. Uh, yeah. But, uh, why didn't they roll with the... K U N T. Well, it, did, it wouldn't have come off as it probably wouldn't. Uh, have, yeah, yeah. I don't know that it would have worked out. Yo, so U N T's radio station is not. It's K N T U. We're North Texas University at the radio station. Not K U N T. Gotcha. I wonder why. Couldn't do that. But that's spelled with a C. Uh, yeah, but still, it's too close. But so here I am, just a college idiot. And the Mavs actually were so bad in those days, Rudy, they gave the college radio stations credentials to their games. And they gave you one? Yeah. And so here I am. I'm, 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 I happened to go that night. It was um, – Dell Harris was coaching the Lakers. Of course. He hated Kobe. And I will never forget, we find out in the pregame that Kobe was going to start because he hadn't been starting yet since they drafted him. It was probably like the 19th or 20th yeah, game. Yeah, Dale Harris would not play. And that was a big talking point. Why aren't you starting the kid? I mean, and finally that night we find out somebody's hurt and uh, Kobe's going to start. And I got to see Kobe's first start. And I'll never forget when the game is over, I'm in the Lakers locker room. And it was the first time that I was ever in awe of an athlete. I was. I just started was going into locker rooms. It was Shaq who put me in all. Oh, Shaq hell comes yeah. in. I'll never forget Shaq. He's got shorts on, a T-shirt. He's barefoot because he just got out of the shower. Every single one of Shaq's toenails was painted a different color. I'll never forget that. Shaq Why are you Shaq. looking at his feet? He's standing in front of me. It's <laughs> fucking Shaq, and his penis is right here. I mean, he, he's, I have never. That was the first time. Him. That was the first time, and it wasn't just I was in awe because he shack this the, 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 the enormity of this human being. How big he was, yeah, he's unbelievable. And I'll never forget. And they asked him, "What do you think about Kobe?" Kobe will be fine. Kobe will be fine. Shaq told a story about because well, somebody asked him, "Do you think Kobe will be able to make it with this jump straight from high school to the NBA?" He's like, "Kobe will be fine." I wanted to go out, of, and they asked him, and somebody asked Shaq, "Could you have made the jump straight to high school and not gone to LSU?" And Kobe says, no, I wasn't ready. Kobe's ready. I wasn't ready. 
Jack told a story where his senior year at LSU, somebody in the NBA, and it, what, he wouldn't say the name, got a hold of Kobe uh, of Shaq's dad and then got a hold of what, Dale Ellis. Who was the coach at LSU? I can't remember. Dale, uh, Not Dale Ellis. I, yeah, I forget. You know what I'm talking yeah. about. That it's guy. like, hey, we'll, we want to have Shaq come out. We're going to draft him, guaranteed million-dollar signing bonus. So Shaq's like, yeah, let's do this. And Shaq and his Shaq's dad's like, no, 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 stay at LSU another season. I promise you it'll work out. I, I know it's hard to turn the money down now. One more year at LSU. Shaq's like, yeah, I was not mature enough. So I stayed another year, and I got a $40 million contract. So it worked out for me. But – he told this story of how Kobe's so mature. It's ironic because we all know how that relationship, how relationship went. played out. He's so mature as a young guy that he didn't need college. Not from a maturity standpoint. No. He is going to be fine. You know what he I was to be. immature, not Kobe. Kobe wants to be the best there's ever been. Even then, Kobe had that mentality where it was ball, 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 ball. And it's just, yeah, I mean, it's just, no, I mean, there's yeah. a million there's stories. A million there's stories. a million stories. A million yeah. stories. There's a million NBA podcasts, and everybody mm-hmm. has some good stories. Some are yeah. better than others. But, yeah, it's always funny. You know, I hear ball bouncing. And mm-hmm. It's Kobe. He's already in a full sweat. I practiced two hours. He's still out there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They all sound about like that. Sure, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? But a lot of it is also like, me. y'all hated him when he was alive. Not me. Not I you. Not you. Yeah. Not you. Yeah. yeah. I find myself really in nobody really liked Kobe because he felt like he was better than everybody because he didn't really really he didn't really want to be around guys he didn't think cared. Well, that was the big thing. He doesn't relate to guys. Well, he doesn't. Be, and what is it because he's well, he speaks Italian and he grew up in Italy. Spanish, and all that shit. He's taking brandy to prom. He thinks he's 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 he thinks he's above everybody. No, few people could match his mentality when it came to the his job. That's why he'd fuck with his own guys in practice. He'd go with him, put an elbow in Sasha Vujic's back. Yeah. And if you didn't come back on him, you were out of here. If you came back and talked shit back to him and got pissed, you're good to go. Then you see, he wanted to make sure that you could pass that. And it's that, like him recruiting not everybody's Matt that Barnes. way. Him recruiting Matt Barnes, because Matt Barnes, you know, Matt almost threw the ball in his face. Mm-hmm. When Kobe was recruiting him in the Lakers, he said, if you're crazy enough to fuck with me, you're crazy enough to play with me. Right. Right. So he respected that. For sure. Just bring it full circle what right, you said. Right. Did Jeff McDonald not give Wimby an all-star vote? What? Somebody's bit, somebody wants to punch. Jeff McDonald did not give Wimby one all-star vote. <laughs> I refuse <gasps> to believe that. I mean, Wimby shouldn't start in the all-star game. Oh, he should start. make it. Start. Yeah, it's a starter. No. What are they announcing start. reserves? That's always on a Thursday night game. I think game, Wimby bro. should get in. You think he's an all-star? Well, okay. I say that because I see. I know what his numbers are. Mm-hmm. So, and in ahead. restricted minutes, he's been terrific. Um, I, well, tell me, I'll tell me who should go in before him, and then I'll rethink it. That's all. Let me see who gets in over. And I see. I, I just say that I'm blowing. I'm just. I'm just saying that out of my ass. But he's put up all star numbers. He's a he's a damn near a triple double every night. Not just yeah, because his team sucks. Well, let me like t- reserve, again. Tell me reserve. who. Yeah, it's a reserve. Tell me who else is getting in out of the West, and then maybe I'll change my mind. But it just feel he feels like he should be borderline All Star so right consideration. Now, the starters: you got Nikola, you got Braun, you yeah. got KD, you mm-hmm. got Luca, yep. and Shea Gilgis. Yep. So, who are the other bigs in the West that get in over Wimby? Anthony Davis. It's a bonus. Reluctantly, Anthony Davis, I guess. Sabonis is damn good for sure. They'll see them tonight. They play Portland, don't they? In Portland in here tonight? I think Spurs they play Portland. Mm-hmm. Ruben Espinosa, $5. Thank you, man. Being number 26 in America is cool and all, but don't forget the target is the New Heights Kelsey brothers, i.e. Kobe's better. Even Kobe's better than LeBron, Mike. Okay, Ruben. I'm not, I'm not, oh. I'm not touching that today. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Uh, uh, yeah, he, maybe not, he uh, is, Mike. If you're talking center... He's been listed as center for the last 20 some odd games. I can't think of anybody who just, oh, okay, well, never mind, Wimby, go sit down. This, these, these, these four guys clearly need to be on the team. Wimby's an all star. He's one, and, and in limited minutes, his freaking point to minute ratio is probably top 10 to in the league. They Wimby's said it the other day, it's one point per minute. Damn. Okay, that's got to so be Wimby's that's got to be among all-star. the leaders. He's is he leading the league in blocks? What the fuck? Wimby's an all star? Yeah, man. Quietly because they're so terrible. It's Wimby's amazing. They're dog shit. Rinse and repeat. That's and that's the season so far. It's unfortunate. 
They had been competitive there for a couple of weeks, but they've had some nasty-ass blowouts again, though, the last week or so. Giving up 140 to Oklahoma the other night was embarrassing. Portland ain't very good. Is Scoop playing? He's been in and out of the lineup. He's supposed to play tonight. All right, good. I, I look forward to watching this game only because of Scoot Henderson. Ah, Ruben's in here. Kobe and Manu would even speak Italian to each other on the court. Yeah, Kobe, yeah, no, Kobe would figure out. Kobe learned a lot of different phrases in different languages so he could talk Tony. shit to other guys. Yeah, he would fuck with Tony a lot. Was it the uh, there's a there's a viral YouTube clip from the Olympics with uh, they're playing Argentina, and he is. Un- Scola. He is fucking Scola's world up in Spanish. Scola. But Scola, hey, Scola, 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 Scola. Scola was like, hey, dude, you don't even, you're not even saying it right. Just speak English. Didn't matter. Well, what happened, you see in that clip, like, was it Chris Bosh and LeBron, LeBron have to, like, Cole. Chill. Let's, Relax. That's up. That's yeah. it, Cole. That's yeah, it. That's, enough. that's it. And then what does Kobe do? Two plays later, gets a steal, goes behind the back, and just fucks somebody's world up and. Because that's, oh, that's who he thrived on. That's who he was, dude, baby. God Almighty, I, love dude, I cried like a baby that day. Dude, I couldn't believe it. I'm, I was, we were on the, I was in a car, found out, and I had to stop. I stopped at the store to. I had to, I had to soak that shit in. That was, that's, that was as big a death as we've had in a long time for celebrities. Have we had a celebrity die that big since? I can't think off the top of my head. So four years ago, who's died in four years? Well, since? remember that same year, uh, Chadwick Boseman died in twenty twenty two. But he wasn't Kobe Bryant. Kobe he was, was the fucking m- Black Panther. I know, but not Kobe was global. <laughs> well, so was Chadwick. But I mean, that was a big as big a death as like Robin Williams or Michael Jackson or Princess Diana. Kobe was a global hero. Yeah, in sure. all walk. Anyways. Massive, damn, God Wim- mighty, damn. Wimby's an all star. Yeah, okay. Just Wimby's ca- an all star, kind of quietly, reserve. Yeah, he's an all star. Coach's pick. Is Chet Holmgren an all star? Depends on his position. Well, Wimby should be in, I think, as a reserve. I don't know if he'll make it, but he should be. How are they doing it? I, I I forget how they do it. They still have the draft. The, the reserves are no, they're not doing that. I think okay. they're going back. We're not going to have. West. Poor almost, KD having to pass on James Harden six picks in a row. It makes it all funny on TNT. Yeah. I think it's back to East West. Back to East West. Right. Thank you. I, I Let's just keep it East West. I don't, I don't, I don't think it should have done I want the world with. versus America. You like that? The world has a great chance to win that game. Well, Wimby would definitely be on the world He'd be team. the Wimby, mm-hmm. Giannis. Luca, Luca, Shea Gilgis. Yeah. There's a there's Nikola, some dog. Nikola Jokic. Nikola. Embiid, uh, they're better than America. Yeah, yeah, and that would make that. Yeah, people just trying to find ways to make the game competitive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's how you make competitive because America what? don't want to get embarrassed. I've never, I've never been bothered by the lack of competitiveness. It's an exhibition. It's a circus. I want to see dunks you and alley oops and no, not about who wins. Okay, no, I'm, I want to see dunks and threes and slams. But you see, is you see, like they'll have the slam dunk contest. But then you get to the All Star game and you see the the actual like the like the actual faces of the league and they'll do insane dunk and it's like damn he should have he should have been in the dunk contest. Is Wimpy doing the uh, skills challenge? I know yeah, he had announced I think that. he is. Is he? Yeah, yeah, he's doing the like the man. Is they still doing the male female? I've lost track over the years. Yeah, me too. I think they still do that where you pair up with a pair up with a female player. I think um, that I was think fun. they do. I like that. that. Was fun. I, I I was in Dallas and saw. Uh, Dirk and Becky Hammond win the skills challenge when they had the That's they had right. the it was the, it was that the was co-ed fun. that was fun. Shout out to Becky. Shout out to Becky. All right, show brought to you in part by Texas Liquor, the official Texas Cheer Liquor, the official liquor store. Uh, I should say liquor stores because there are nine, nine of them. Yes, sir. What a great time yesterday, Mike. What a great time. Thanks everybody that showed up yesterday. The Texas Cheer that was amazing. Had a great time with that. There are nine locations in and around the Greater San Anto area. Uh, family owned and operated Poodle San Antonio people, immigrants that came here years and years ago and have built up a liquor store empire chain. And we are proud that they are one of our OG sponsors here on in the building. It is Texas cheer liquor. Thank you very much to Mr. Singh and Renee and, and Pam and everybody out there that run that, run that place Mama and had us out there yesterday. Thank you so much. I appreciate that uh, very much. It is Texas cheer liquor. All right. I got to start promoting the barbecue. Yeah, it's about bad. time. Yeah, well, I I, need, I wanted to get through this week. 
Because Brad had texted me the other day. Get I didn't get yesterday. back to him. Brad had texted me if I wanted to be a judge. I told him. I, uh, yeah, I was like, I'm, I didn't respond. I need to respond. But I, I, I don't need know. to discuss that. Yeah. Your role. But it's your true. thing, though. I don't want to. That's yours. That's your baby. I'm not well, going to come in as well, the adopted parent. Which is parent. why we need, to, we need to discuss that. I don't want you isolated. But I don't, as I don't know if I want. I don't know if I want to sit around and eat, eat all day. I don't know if I want to do that. I'll help you do some stuff, but I don't. I don't know if I want to be a judge. Well, there it is. We'll, we'll put it to the people. What should Rudy's role be this year? Slip and slide and barbecue sauce. You know better. <laughs> no. By the way, I'm going to get another punch in before you start. Oh, All right, go shit. ahead. What, now? what did I'm I do I'm going to punch Mike Taylor. God <laughs> almighty. Because well, I gonna... asked you over two weeks ago to send me the graphic of that flyer, and you still haven't done it. You mean this one that has yes, the QR code one. on it? But it's all good because I ripped it off social media. Oh, okay. Dude, come Dude. on, Mike. Get your shit together. I am, I am a You're new. Busy. I am You're a busy. small business owner. I'm busy. Uh, I forgot. I'm sorry, LG. Sorry, LG. Man, I innocently totally did forget. I did not ignore you on purpose. It'd be worse if I just blew you off. I, le- I legit forgot. That's how he feels, though. And you should know better than to ask me to do something like that and, and trust me to actually be able to do it properly. So there it is. There's a flyer. So can they scan that with their phone, like on the screen right there? Yeah, if they're, not, cool. if they're not watching with their phone. So I have a copy of the flyer here. Let me see. I'm going to do it. Okay, do it. I'm gonna I'm gonna scan the actual sheet. It's barbecue season, y'all. Sorry. Let's see. If you're new to this show, and I, and and a lot of y'all probably are now because we, we're 26 in America on Spotify. Uh, how do you do it? Click. On, okay, here we go. There we got it. Uh, we do a barbecue every year for the Salvation Army of San Antonio, uh, the Boys and Girls Club. San Antonio Salvation Army has set up its own Boys and Girls Club affiliated through the Salvation Army. And I do, uh, we do a barbecue and a cook-off and raise money for the Boys and Girls Club every single year. Last year we raised over 20000 uh, Yeah, something like that. Between twenty and 30000 I forget the exact That's number. Crazy. And this year's event will be in April. And we're... So excited to be doing it again. It's going to be, I think this is the fifth annual. God, have we done five of these already? That's that's spectacular. It is <laughs> April the 6th. That is a Saturday. It's the it's Saturday. First, I think it's the first Saturday of April. It's going to start at 10 a.m. and go till 3 or 4 or 5 o'clock. Um, we have barbecue teams that want, and we'll have judges. Now, Rudy has done that before. Judge the different teams. We have several different categories. We'll give away awards. And we invite you to become a sponsor, and we invite you just to show up and hang out and buy a plate or buy a VIP, which gets you a plate and entrance into the grounds. You can hang out with us all day long. And we got sponsors out the yin yang that I will start posting every day. I need to send you a, I need to send you a, um, a link to the sponsorship sheet to LG. Sure. It'll never happen, LG. No, I'm, it's top of mind now. I needed to get this company rolling. I needed to get this show off the ground, and we needed to get through yesterday's remote, and now that we have, I can turn my attention to barbecue season. So if you're interested in helping us with the barbecue, hit me up. We have several different sponsorship options from minimal stuff all the way to putting your dang name on the entire thing. All right? All right, there's that. Let's play Get to Know You. What are we doing today? Rudy and I have been getting to know music each other. Us, uh, that'd be cool. Be awesome. Don't make me punch you for not having music ready. I feel, I feel like I'm on the defensive today. I was going to buy you Asian food, too, for lunch today. Why Asian? Why Asian food? Just assume that you ate it all day, every day. Do you not? Mm, I did have it last night. I saw that Moki in your fridge. <laughs> What's mochi? <laughs> oh, you want those things? I don't no, like that. Those terrible. things are nasty. What, the mochi donuts? Ugh. No, I have like these little mochi, like they got like boba uh, pearl oh. pearls in the middle. Oh, yeah, I don't want yeah, that. No, I don't like mochi at all. I don't like that stuff. My brother bought those and, and we haven't touched them. Yeah. Oh, gross. All right. Today on Get to Know You, last meal, speaking of, and I, and I, we, we all should go to lunch after this. It's been we a good are, week. We, we should are, celebrate. We got a, I got a perfect place for us to go. Where are we going? Don't say Cracker Barrel because of me. I'm not, I can't say it on air. You know where we're going. They got food over there. 
Oh, we're, we're oh, we have a meeting. Oh, we're gonna go have lunch at the yeah, place where they have yeah, the meeting. Oh, yeah. okay, cool. We'll eat that. That'll work. That'll have a great okay. restaurant. Oh, no shit. Great restaurant. All Fantastic. Right. All right. Well, if they decide to get and do business with us, then we'll give them some public love. Well, Last, I just don't want our competitors head over there. Oh, speaking of, do we have competitors? No. No. Just us. Yeah. We're in competition we don't, with us. We are. That's correct. Kelsey Bros are our competitors. Shit, dude, give me that. That's hot, what dude. I'm talking give me about. Dad. Give me that. Talk your shit, LG. Shit. Talk shit. your shit, LG. Shit. Gosh damn it. Shit. So last meal? Last meal, speaking of food. And we're, we're going to get you out of here uh, soon. I'm going calamari. You're you about to lose it. I'm calamari. Call, I'm going okay. calamari for starters. Right. Tiger sushimi. <laughs> I'm going calamari. Um, <laughs> this my Uh, Shit. <laughs> You threw me this this morning. You go first. I know I'm having a calamari appetizer. Wait, while we're there, where's the best calamari in town? Oh, I'm going to have for me, gonna have 50 people yeah. now. I get 50 different places. For because, me, I like... Because it's hit or miss. Sometimes I bring you that frozen shit and it's rubbery. Yeah, Dude. I don't do that. But you don't want it too crispy either. Yeah, but it's got to melt in your mouth. Fresh calamari just, it's just I, smooth. I, I think yeah, Carabas, yeah. Carabas has a solid calamari. All right. I'll have to check it out. Carabas, I haven't been there in years. Carabas and Perry's have a solid calamari. Okay, Bohannon's. I only go to Perry's on Bohannon's has outstanding calamari. I don't know if I've been to Bohannon's. And you get it's a freaking meal. It's almost like too much. It's more than an appetizer. So I'm going first. Yeah, you go first. Last All right. meal. All genres. Last meal. Whatever. What you doing? Don't Dip, tell me no goddamn enchiladas. No. Carne guisada. Shit. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, oh, God. I do love carne guisada. Should I honor my mother by eating Mexican my last meal? No. I don't know. <laughs> it's your last meal. All right. I, I, I'm going to stay seafood. Give me some calamari. Scallops. Seared scallops. You like scallops? I love scallops. And since I'm dying, it's my I'm gonna fucking gorge. Then I want I want some some mahi mahi or some sea bass. Seafood would be my last meal because I'm I'm, I'm coming back in the next life as a dolphin anyway. Seafood, fish, great fish, awesome fish. I'm coming back as a killer whale. Well. I'm gonna eat you. That's I'm a fine. fucking killer whale. Well. I'm an orca. I'm an apex I'm predator. A fun loving. Nobody dolphin. fucking hunts me. Oh, I just want to. I'm a, a fucking time. apex predator. I just want to have a good time and no. hunch and hunch people. Yeah, I'm going calamari. I'm going gumbo from Basie's. Ooh. Spicy, so some nice gumbo. Yeah. I'm going dirty rice. Mm. Fish. Yeah. A quality fish over a bed of Cajun rice. Oh, yeah, and please. then um for my dessert, I'm going with the pound cake from Kona. Damn. They have a warm pound you cake. You thought this through. A warm pound cake. Yeah. Okay. You like warm pound cake? This <laughs> 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 Cajun's damn good. That's why I could I live in dirt. New Orleans. I love dirty rice. I love New Orleans. I'd be fifty pounds overweight within two years and get diabetes. So you don't. Make, so you don't. You're not making fun of Zion. You won't make fun of Zion because you well, understand. Well, if you paid me that kind of money, I would. I'll die. I could. I, could me too. I wouldn't. Die. I would. Yeah, I'd be. I don't, I've lost respect for Zion Williamson. Same. Although, let it be known that I said on draft day that that was the worst place possible because he's going to get fat. I did say that. And fat. Was, people thought I was doing a bit. People thought I was joking, and it couldn't have been more correct. No, you were. You were spot on, my brother. Yeah. I'll take some Pound Town too. What's Pound Town? <laughs> What are we talking about? Food or I mean, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get no, some nookie on the way out. No, oh, I'm talking about my pound last cake. meal before I die. A little, I like, I like I'm a pound cake. cake. My mom makes the best. Oh, okay. But all right, uh, I mean, mm. or we're never gonna do my entertainment news. I guess. What the hell? We I, got I time. keep saying got every day. Minutes. Let's do my entertainment news too. We'll yeah, just, we we'll just roll to. into let's it. Let's roll into it. Come on, man. We can't. Keep I want. Teasing. I just haven't done it in so long. I got to get back in the habit of doing it. But I am prepared. Are you? No, no, I am. I'm good. Mandertainment news. Look, here's the thing: we're we. I don't get paid to do this anymore. Oh well, then fuck I don't have it. a salary. No, no, I, no I've got to introduce these new segments because we also have new audience members 
the word's going to get out that we're doing pretty good now. And we're going to have, hopefully, a, a, a new audience that will have to get used to how we do things. All right, it is time for Mattertainment News. If you'd like to sponsor Mattertainment News, reach out to one of us and we'll tell you how to do it. For now, it's being brought to you by Pound Cake. <laughs> I'm going to Pound Town. Rudy had a theory earlier in the week that the Chiefs had an advantage because the NFL wants Taylor Swift at the Super Bowl. You still stand by that? They do want her there. I'm not saying that they're going to cheat to get her there. But the NFL would be thrilled if the Chiefs won. Thrilled. Because I'm telling you, those ad prices go up if Taylor Swift's there. I can't wait for the Ravens to hang 50 on their ass, stump their asses, and she and Jason cry together and we never, he retires and we're done seeing her. Yeah. I love Taylor Swift. It's not personal. She's been, she's been shoved she's down been my throat. A, she's been a great uh, citizen. Okay. Well, this one is not cool. What's up? Taylor obviously has been trending for weeks and weeks because of her showing up at Chiefs games and coming off a world tour and all this kind of thing. And I get criticized because I've been critical of her in the past, her talent. Yeah, you have. But this is bullshit here. Some asshole has cranked out a bunch of really X-rated, AI-generated nude photos of her and posting them all over the place. And of course it went viral because it's her. Have y'all seen the AI naked Taylor Swift photo? Fuck no. I'm not that much that's of a horn weird. ball. That's weird. Like, Oh, let me click on her AI photos. No, that's stupid. And so then what happened was because some asshole decided to do that, a bunch of other assholes decided to be the, to join the other dog barking and create their own too. So we have a bunch of mock-up nude Taylor Swift pics making their way all over the internets. And some of them, I mean, it looks, looks real. And that's, dude, this is, see, I have been a defender and a supporter of AI. I don't fear AI. We use AI. We've used AI on this show to help us with shit. Oh, no shit. Okay. I don't, I, I, yeah, I mean, how do you start a business, AI? You know, I, I chat GPT. But to create naked pictures of someone and then post them is bullshit. That ain't cool. But this is the stuff. This is thwarting progress. AI is supposed to be meant for good, but of course, jackasses. But that's what humans do. We take everything and screw it up. I think that should be. I think they need to come down with stricter laws on stuff like that. Like you yeah. probably should go to jail for that. Because Absolutely. What's going to happen now? Now, next thing you're going to know, it's going to be J Lo, and then it's going to be Oh yeah, Zendaya. everybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, now that sure. Thing, well, gotta, not so. only that. This is already a problem in schools. It's a new form of bullying. <laughs> For oh, kids to create nude really? AI pictures of the the girl they're bullying or a boy, God, such bullshit. Well, I'm, say. I'm team Taylor on this one. I'm team Ravens on Sunday, but this is ridiculous. That's that girl, bullshit. that girl, That's yeah, not right. yeah, that ain't right. That's bullshit. All right, did you see the news of the insane hillbilly rapist from Deliverance got died this week? What you mean? <laughs> What's Deliverance? All right, this is where we get cultural. Yeah, you can help me out. Is this, the, white, is this white people stuff? It's white people. You know we're crazy, man. We watch crazy shit. Okay, this is raisins in the potato salad type shit. Oh, it's yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, it's up there with that too. Yeah. One of the one of the it's a baby boomer. One of the great movies of the late seventies. When, when did Deliverance come out? Eighty, right around 79, 80, 81. The great Burt Reynolds, the great Ned Beatty, um, the great John Voight. It's about it's a it's a movie about these guys that go hiking and camping up in the Ozark Mountains in Arkansas, Missouri, somewhere. Okay, John and, Voight's Angelina's daddy, right? Uh huh. Okay, yeah, he's in this. Oh shit, a young John. That's right. Boyd. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And they get lost in, up in the mountains, and some fucking toothless redneck hillbilly ass cave living some bitches that live in the mountains way up in the middle of nowhere start they they find these guys and they start tracking them. And they start hunting these guys and eventually rape the shit out of Ned Beatty's character. There's a very disturbing scene. Told you it's white people shit. We do crazy stuff. <laughs> Gosh, this is a lot. The scene where Ned Beatty is raped and Ned Beatty was a fat man. Fat? I'd say that squishy butt. Stuff like that. White poor, people. poor Ned Beatty gets cornholed 
And there's a worse an, than Andy Dufresne. Similar. Yeah, yeah, same stuff, same bit. But it's so disturbing. And I don't it's know if I want to watch it's one of it's one of Baby Boomer's favorite movies. Now, which one of them got arrested recently? No, a guy got died. <laughs> oh, Herbert Calvert, who played the infamous toothless there was a toothless man, of course. And he's dead. He got killed All in a car wreck. trashy like that? He does not participate in the rape, but he's like, it's even worse. He's standing in there just looking at it like, he's all like deliciously Getting turned on by watching his cousin rape Ned Beatty. And Ned Beatty, his reaction, how he cries and how he's just so disturbed by having that happen to him. It's one of these movies that gets made that really didn't need to get made. Somebody just wanted to do a man rape scene on film. And of course it was, had a bunch of good actors in it. So we love it. Bring out the gimp. <laughs> Bring out the what? The gimp. What's a gimp? You haven't seen Pulp Fiction either, huh? I've seen Pulp Fiction. The scene where Red Ball. Marcellus is getting raped by Red the Red Ball in the mouth. Yeah, yeah, Big yeah. Rames. The gips, the dude, and the he got the he got the bodysuit on. Oh, okay. That Bruce Willis. Yeah, that was unfortunate. Punches. That was unfortunate. Step uh, aside, Butch. <laughs> yeah, Bing Rames. I never want to see Bing Rames getting raped. That was strange. By that skinny ass boy. Yeah, guy. dude. What the hell was that? He was all huh, sweaty. Huh, huh. <laughs> well, I guess you just have to go wake him up now. What a you? great scene that was. Why was that a great scene, Mike? God. <laughs> what the fuck, man? What kind of show am I on? It was what a great did I scene. sign up for? No, the whole not just the raping no, know, part. That's not great. You. It's just when it's over. Cinematic. Because he's because he's literally trying to kill Butch. But because of what Butch saves him. Right. And so he's like, oh, we, what about what now? What do you mean, what about now? You and me, are, are we cool? Yeah, we cool. Except two things. Don't tell nobody about this. Oh, yeah, and yeah, then yeah, 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 yeah. And two, yeah. your L.A. privileges are revoked. You let him go, but... Under the understanding you'd never step foot in L.A. again. Because remember, he was paid to throw the fight. And not only did Butch not throw the fight, he beat the guy to death. He had paid. Butch I got to go watch boxer. Ball Fiction again. My memory's so shaking. So Bing was the, he was the gang leader. Yeah, I remember El that. Jefe, and he And Butch was a pro boxer. And, he, and, 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 and Marcellus Wallace was the character. <laughs> paid Butch, Bruce Willis's character, right. to throw the fight. But Butch got in the ring and his pride took over. And he beat this guy to death and so like yeah never you know, come back and Marcellus again. Right. lost a lot of money and that's the whole scene where he's chasing Butch and they're having that fight but then they finally make peace over the rapists pretty amazing we can all come together I'm about that. to get medieval on your ass what a great scene that was great move god that was good. great move this great is movie. a tasty burger <laughs> now but there's a scene in deliverance where this guy's watching the raping and he just he just has pants rigor more just watching that. Just huh, it just it's disturbing. <laughs> just awful. That's all. Ed Mendoza, Mr. Soon to be living the rest of his short ass life in agonizing pain rapist here. I'm gonna get medieval on your ass. You hear me talking, Hillbilly Boy? That's a great scene. You'll find that I have memorized a lot of movie yeah, lines that are stupid. I don't know why. <laughs> I should have memorized math and science, but no, I memorized movie lines yeah, and stupidity. I used to get in trouble for that. Stupidity. Yes, yeah, science! I used to get in trouble for memorizing rap lyrics, but not my, my math. Uh, my the great John Stewart has returned, or is going to return Shout out to, to John Stewart. Comedy Central. John, who broke my heart and retired in an election year. And because he was tired, he'd done that for a long time, needed something else. Really good, though. After fumbling along with Noah What's-His-Face, and then Noah quits on him, and they've had roving guests, they've agreed. John Stewart has agreed to go back and host his own show, The Daily Show, on Mondays only, starting next month through the year for the a election. After Apple told him to go get his shine box. Yeah, because I mean, here's the thing. Who was it? Oh, oh, he had okay, a show on Apple, but I don't have Apple, and I didn't watch it. I love John, but I'm not going to go get another subscription. I don't want to subscribe to an entire app for one show. I wasn't he he do said that. something critical about China, and Apple freaked out because well, they get a lot of profit from China, so well, they can. Well, oh, shit. Well, then F Apple. I mean, it's, I'm an American. I ought, to, I ought to be able to criticize the Chinese government, not the Chinese people, but I can be, I can be critical of Joe Biden and Donald Trump if I can't be critical of Xi Jinping, too. I don't want to work for you. 
Fuck off. I ain't LeBron. That's something that the now that's something I'll bash LeBron's ass from one day to the other on. The whole China bullshit with Daryl yeah. Morey and all that. Uh, you boys interested in uh, I'm gonna profile Rudy. He has no interest in this. Or I don't know, maybe you're a big Sting Billy Joel fan. Anyhow, LG, lovers you have any interest? I'm only interested in the Lovers and Friends concert. Uh, oh, is that the one in Vegas with all the hip, yeah. all the R and B guys? Yeah. yeah, I saw that. That's like a big swinger party. But no, Sting. Sting's a legend. Sting. He's a legend. And who's the other one? Billy Joel. Yeah, they're legends. Yeah, they're gonna play. A, they're gonna play together Where? at the Alamo Dome in November. Tickets go on sale in a week or two. Last, what's the last concert you went to? Speaking of getting old and not doing as much stuff as I used to, I don't go to concerts as much as I used to either anymore. Uh, the last concert I went to was Maxwell at Tech. Maxwell Techport a couple months ago. I I've bet seen you. I Maxwell bet you three times. I bet you happened that night when you got home. Yeah, because mm-hmm. she loves Maxwell. Oh yeah. Okay. He warms it up. To put a bow on this show, to bring it all back full circle. Are you okay with her thinking about Maxwell while she's with you, not him, you, the love of her life, her husband, and father of her children? Shit, Mike. I guess. <laughs> Fuck. It's Maxwell. Yeah. You kind of have to be I cool. Yeah, I can't be mad at that. I mean. I can't be mad yeah. at that. Nothing. No, there was no touching. No. Yeah. No, no, no. Don't tell me you've never thought about someone in gal. Come never. No. Well, no, of course. Never. Of course not. Ever. 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 I have had I've had the best, I've had the most fun. And I'm not saying this to pump sunshine. I know he I gotta get Talk you to off me. I gotta get you off this bike. So you yeah, get, you need some hot tea or something. I need a, a hot toddy. I have to tell you, and I'm not, I don't want to get all weird. And I even texted Rudy yesterday. I What's thanked up? I thanked him. About what? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, We're one weekend. I don't want I, I'd like to I'd like this to last for years if possible. This in the building. I am reinvigorated, rejuvenated. Thank you for deciding to make this jump, showing faith in he and I, and thank God that we're doing well because I've been worried, you know. You've been worried? You were worried? Yeah. I mean, we didn't go to you. You came to us. And I know you're a grown man. No one made you do anything. No one made you sign anything. Right. But I'm humbled. And I'm appreciative, and I'm proud that you decided to come work with us. Thank you, man. I'm happy I'm here. I have not had as much fun doing this. And it's, if you can't, you're not having fun doing this, you're stupid. It's time you can't ago. be doing it. Right. I've not had as much fun doing this in a long time. Thank you, man. I appreciate Same it. Same here, brother. Thank you, Same man. here. All right, that's it. We're done. My Thank God. you, Thunderdome. Uh, my God, we're 26th on Spotify for all sports. We're just under Colin Cowherd. Come on, man. Come on. In one week. What? What are we looking like in six months? I don't know. Well, see, now the pre- I'm, I'm glad we started off well, but I don't want to get too high. No, I do. I want to go. I want to. I, I want to. I'm uh, ready I for be this. Snoop high. Me too. Yeah. I'm ready for this. Um, my You're whole career. I, my whole career. I've been the underdog guy, the edgy underdog, under the radar. I got a haircut. I'm ready to change. I'm ready to go big time. Let's go. Let's, Let's get epic it. Go. Thank you, Thunderdome. Have a great weekend. Thank you to Texas Cheer Liquor. Thank you to the law office of Orlando Kill. Thank you to r and Auto Glass. If you're interested in jumping on this show while we're cheap, and I emphasize while we're cheap. While we're cheap. Reach out to us. Love y'all hard. I can't believe it went this well. Man. And we're just starting. Shit. Thank you, Thunderdome. We'll see you boys in here on Monday. Love you all hard. Thank you so much. This program was made possible by contributions from viewers and listeners like you. Thank you. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.